Okay. Okay. Small talk from the beginning. So, tell me about these pants that this guy is wearing. You know what? <laughs> you had some. This of This is May twenty fourth, two thousand three. Yeah. This is a conversation one interview set, the doors with Peter and Carlson and, Oscars, but I and with, and with uh, Jim Armstrong's yeah. help. We're going to go through a chronological list in aviation involvement you probably here in will. Spokane. They're in that house somewhere. So let's cut and start with uh, early childhood. Skeeter, you've had a, a wonderful life, and we've all heard a lot of the stories about it, but a lot of us haven't heard about how it was like growing up here in Spokane the early, early years, and uh, kind of how you got to start here. So could you start right at the beginning for us? Sure. I was fetched up at York and Ash, roughly. That's out in the Northwest Boulevard, northwest part of town. And uh, there's dirt streets, and they drained them with horses, and everything was interesting in those days. In fact, one time, one of the greatest highlights of the whole thing is the Fort George Wright would have a whole gaggle of people out in formation. They were kind of sneak back in the fort without the Air Force or the Army Air Corps at that time catching them. So they come right down to York with all their equipment and walking. And man, I thought that was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, Pretty soon here comes the old 38s, the big old orange and OD biplanes, and they were chasing them. And all those guys would all run and hide. Oh, it was really neat. I mean, low level? Yeah, the low 30, level. I mean, at 100 they feet. They didn't have rules for them guys. So, <laughs> so these old 38s would just uh, literally fire right over your neighborhood, low level, or yeah, right near Fort really Wright? Yeah, really, low level, maybe 500 feet. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that was thrilling. And that's later Only on. Only happened once and all the time I was a kid out there. Sure. Gee whiz. But that started your interest in aviation, or what? I think I was born with an interest in aviation. I don't think you clean it. Yeah. Is it genetic? Maybe there's a gene, a positive aviation gene. I think gene. so. I think I really do. Yeah. It's kind of like you can fly or you can't fly. <laughs> <laughs> you fly or you can't. Yeah, that's a, that's a tell, good Tell us the story how you got the name Skeeter. Well, the 27 air races was going to take place in September. And so I was lobbying to get out here, and so my granddad and dad were also interested in aviation. So we went out to the big air show, and it was, all I remember is Destin Legs. I was about so tall, and that's all I was seeing. So they put me up on their shoulders and packed me around, and when I'd see a really nice, colorful airplane, I'd pinch them. And, and leave a mark. Tell them, and leave them a mark. <laughs> I got the name Skeeter out of that. Oh, wow. Okay. Stuck with them all his life. We sat all day out to Fells Field. Oh, God, that was wonderful. Oh, gee whiz. So that was like 76 years ago. Yeah, really. <laughs> I remember that better than yesterday. Oh, oh, that's incredible. That's incredible. And what was your father's livelihood then? He was a... Uh, he was uh, part owner of this Barber and Beauty Supply House. That your grandfather had started? Had started, yeah. So he obviously did this by father was a, a real Swede, come from Sweden, was great with cutlery. In fact, it started out as a cutlery business. He would buy shears and things, and this all this stuff come from Germany and Sweden. That was where the best of the cutlery come from. And he could sharpen anything, and so people bring this stuff into him, and they'd ask him, don't you have any supplies? They don't have to run all over town. Well, he finally carried some supplies. Pretty soon it was a supply house. Then the beauty business started, and that, it started that, but that was the doldrums of it. Yeah. And, and you, he, your dad and your grandfather would travel around this part of the country, or they had a warehouse here in town, a store? Oh, I had a warehouse here in town. And so they mostly, were selling over the counter? Yeah, in the early days, they didn't travel a whole lot. They had salesmen out on the road that did travel. Mm -hmm. In fact, these guys, they'd put old cars on trains and carry them over the mountains. It was much simpler that way. Oh, is that right? Yeah. If the roads were terrible. You get in town, they were pretty good. They make all their calls, put the tr car back on the train, bring it home. Well, that's so kind of interesting to think yeah. about that. Huh. And then, uh, so your dad, as you got a little bit older, your dad traveled a lot or whatever. Yeah. And your dad and mom uh, had broke up by then. Yeah, maybe somewhere in the 30s. And then and you started spending a lot of time with your grandmother. Yeah. And uh, I built model airplanes. I started that when I was very young. From, from magazines? Magazines, model airplane news, which has been around forever. And... And these are just kits were ten cents. Wow! Included the glue. Including the glue, you never got enough. <laughs> these are rubber band or free flight? Oh, free flight. Is that right? Yeah. So you've got this interest early on. Oh these yeah. These O38s are beating you up. Yeah. That really gets your blood pumping. That did. 
And then at some point, we'll transition now to your first, at some point you get an airplane ride, no? Well, when I was going to school, like United, college or high school? Grade school. Grade school? In fact, it was junior high. Yeah, okay, junior high, all right. And so you're 12 or 13. And contest on. Boeing was just coming out with 247s, first low-wing all-metal transport. So they were going to have a big hoopla about that. So the kid that got the most airmail letters sent in was going to get a ride. Boy, I took all the mail from the store. Not exactly legal, but it worked. I got me a ride in that. <laughs> now, wait a minute, I don't understand. You, you go to the stores and you got letterhead and then you'd mail this letter or what? They took uh, track of all your mailing. And the mailing you as a child had mailed. Yeah. The okay. more letters you mailed, the better chance you had of getting a ride on this thing. So the more letters a, a kid mailed, the likelihood of getting a ride. The likelihood in the of getting a ride was better. Okay. And, and, and you I did had, well. I had plenty. Yeah, and they were going to take two trips, which was 20 kids. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And, boy, the first they announced who was the winner, so, oh, God, I made it. <laughs> yeah. And, and we all come out to Feltz Field, and the teacher was honcho on the thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. You had to get out there. You had to figure your way out there because she brought a few kids, but you couldn't bring them all. Did you have to wear a tie? No, we just dressed like school. Yeah, okay. And uh, got on the 247, and. Oh, the whole thing was thrilling beyond words. I mean, right here at Feltz Field. Right here in River City. No kidding, yeah? And Could you get over the spar okay? Oh, yeah. That big old giant spar in the middle of the cockpit? Well, this is, yeah, the spar, yeah. Oh, everybody's falling over that thing. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. I wasn't okay. going to do that. You know, I was a little more about it. Did you get a window seat? Oh, sure. Of course, everyone, I think all of them everyone gets seats. a window yeah. seat at 247. Yeah. One row on each side. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. that's right. You get a window and an aisle. All <laughs> <same side. laughs> you yep. get a window and aisle yep. all to yourself. So did you get up in the front? And everyone, every kid got invited up and stood between the two pilots and got to look out the front. And that's ride one in a 247. Yep. Now, prior to that, you said, you told me before, you can remember the Boeing 40s in Spokane. Boeing 88s. Oh, I remember them, yeah. I never got a ride in one. Yeah, do you remember them going overhead? Oh, yeah. In fact, they were so they, common, you didn't even look up. They would take out, oh, maybe in the early afternoon, and they go to, which must have been Pasco, because it's always sure. gone that way. Yep. And they were noisy. That great big prop was just a churning and a climbing out, and oh, God, that was just wonderful. I'd watch them until there was a speck. <laughs> <laughs> and then you remember the ADAs being here as well? ADA was only here, what they called a scenic tour. Mm -hmm. And it's the same one that Boeing has in the museum. The one that Mud Hole Smith had. Yeah. One that came out of Alaska. And they had left that thing up in Alaska, and it was kind of soaking in the ground at the official dump. Yeah, right. And a couple of the guys, one of them being Leffler, whose brother run the trade school, was instrumental in getting that thing packed off, and the Air Force brought it down for him in uh, what was the biggest cargo airplane at the time. So you get the first ride in a 247. Yep. Then how long before you actually got to touch and stir some paint with oh. a stick? Oh, I think maybe it was somewhere... In the 40s. Okay. Where yeah. were you? Where were you when that happened? Yeah. Out here, Feltz Field. In okay. Feltz. Yeah. Well, so tell your, us about that. So day. your first flight. Your first flight uh, was, you know, I took a lesson. I mean, you walked into Mamer's Shrek or what? Well, yeah. That was the most popular place there. Yeah, sure. Told them what I wanted to do. And, and you had money. Yep. And how did you get the money? I had a Metropolitan Record paper route. Oh, is that right? <laughs> okay, there you go. That was All right. another one like Nickel Nick, a freebie. Okay. And you'd have to put a lot of them out. We made four bits a night. Yeah, okay. Well, you got a little mileage out of 50 cents. Four bits, 50 yeah. cents, okay. Yeah, two bits being a quarter. Yeah, right. Yeah, for the young folks in the audience, right? <laughs> they wouldn't yeah. know that one. Right? They wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you, you cash money, walked up to Mamer Shrek, cash and money, bought your first hour. wanted to get me a lesson. Okay. First instructor was a woman. A woman? Yep. Yeah. And we started out in a J3 Cub. Yes. Boy, I was amazed at how fast this thing went when it was just taking off, getting the speed up. Yes. And then pretty soon the thing comes up and flies. I said, Boy, I'll never learn this. This is terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gee whiz. We did run around the field a few times and, yeah, that's not bad. It's controllable. I think I can learn this. If I get over that takeoff business. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't like the takeoff. I thought that was really fast. <laughs> From nothing to whatever it took. Yeah, back. 40 yeah. miles an hour or whatever it got. <laughs> yeah, <was> right. <laughs> Gee whiz. Did you continue lessons at that point? Oh, as soon, you know, as the money come in. Sure. They were too long apart to really yeah, learn. Right, money. sure. Half hour at a time or whatever. Yeah. Sure. And okay. They were, they were trying to get people to fly, so I'd make it easy on you. So how, then, how many hours did you get before you went off to war? Well, between what a time I got in the Army, 
I probably had five or so. So you probably and had some them solo. Of them out of out of town, you know, like in Indiana and and. Uh, now, how'd Missouri. you end up in Indiana? Well, when I got in the army. Okay. Of course, when I got in the army, it was a little different. I caught. What was the name of that stuff I got, Doris? Scarlet okay. fever. Scarlet fever. In those days, scarlet fever. They pop you in the quarantine building. Down you by had the river. scarlet fever. Yeah. And okay. They put you in there until you was over it, so you were non-communicatable. Okay. And of course, if you got a draft notice, which I did, they just turn on and notify them. This kid's going nowhere. Okay. Until you got free bill of health. And you're in there for quite a time. It seems to me like it was forever, but I don't imagine it was more than three weeks to a month. We got a note here. What do you know about your fifth grade teacher? Is there a story there somewhere? Oh, yeah. Fifth grade teacher was Elma Heflin. Elma Heflin? Yes, sir. Sounds like a spinster. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was 10 feet tall. She oh, yeah. made a parachute jump, broke her ankle. She made a parachute and, jump? Yep. And, and owned the student prints that I have now. She owned the student prints? Yes, and this is your teacher? Yeah. And this is prior to the, or uh, later than the, Let's oh, see. yeah, this was maybe yeah before the 247, right? somewhere in there. And she owned the student print. Yeah. Well, she's no spinster. She was a visionary. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, of course, she got she lost her teaching job because she was inflicting students, me being one, yes. to fly. No kidding. Yeah. Well, that's a great piece That would of fly history. today. And she had her student prints based here at Phelps. Yep. No kidding. Vermilion well, Red. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> in El Conics and actually at CEAA's hangars where it was... Based. I'll be darned. Okay, we got to roll ahead now. You've uh, you've entered the military. You've got maybe five hours of pre-military flight time. Yep. And Jim's going to take over World War II now because we got some really good stuff here okay. in World War II. We, we've had some fantastic stories about what happened in in War II, and you were with the uh, uh, seventy fifth infantry, Division. and you were attached to the liaison squadron, right? Yeah. Well, we took our basic in in. Uh, Leonard Wood, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. And at that time, I was trying to get transferred to the Army Air Corps. <clears throat> God, I didn't want to be in the infantry. Well, uh, what time of year were you in Missouri? Uh, seems to me I went back there in May, June, okay. something like that. So it wasn't real hot yet. It was getting there, it was and getting it's there. muggy back there. Yeah. March is okay, so it's getting, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there. But. And... Uh, Basic, you didn't do any aviating. You didn't do any thinking about it. You just every day hut two, three, four, and did all the other stuff. And a lot of this fun. This went on for a couple of months. A couple of months of walking around, huh? Yeah. Okay. And Made finally, your bed every day? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. No, no going to pass, nothing. Strictly basic training. So when that let up, everybody got to go to town, and things lightened up a little bit, and I was still trying to get a transfer. Pretty soon this guy's showing up in the Air Corps. You know, what are you doing here? Well, they transferred me. I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave the Air Corps. I didn't want to stay here. This is terrible. This is infantry. Yes. Well, I was in the field artillery. That's a better part of the infantry. Right. And these guys were showing up more often. Well, it turns out that they had so many in the Air Corps that they were transferring the guys to the ground pounders, whatever. And I could see my chance to ever get in the Air Corps was evaporating. Sure, okay. So I just started lobbying. The, of course, already now, we're having these flash cards and identifying airplanes, and it got to the point where I'm going to hold up this card, and you guys identify this airplane, and shut up, Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> you had it all done. Because you already knew them all. Yeah, I knew them right. all. Yeah, all right, okay. <laughs> so that went on. Every one of those scenes, I was invited to shut up. Okay. And... Finally, they started, well, we're going to have an air liaison section, of, and it takes two airplanes for battalion, which was, uh, I was in the headquarters battalion. Okay. And so I got sent off. Well, first we went on maneuvers. And, and these are L-4s that go with the battalion? Yep. And okay, basically a military J-3. These, yeah, these were brand new ones. We didn't get some of these old tired ones. Oh, wow, okay. And they showed up in crates, and we would assemble them at this little cinder airport. The overseas. No, this was in the States. Okay, in the States, okay, but. got it, all right. And I could stand up in the crate and walk around, everybody else going like this. <laughs> <laughs> <That's pretty neat. laughs> okay, all right. So you put these things together with a manual. Yep. You, you had some formal mechanic training in, obviously. 
Well, books are you pretty. You're going to get it right then and there. Yeah, right. Nobody knew a whole lot. <laughs> okay. It was OJT. Read yeah. the book. Yeah, okay, all Read right. Read the book. Sure. So we got them together. And the pilots flew them, and it worked fine. And we, then we went to maneuvers, and we took the airplanes with us. We had a better deal than the rest of them because we'd have to find some meadow, and we weren't with the with the battalion, which was great. Sure. And so this is just a few a guys. Deal going, you know. Yeah. So we observed artillery fire and all that stuff, and the mechanics or the other personnel they just fixed airplanes. There wasn't really a you know a, an army mechanic. He's more of a parts replacer. Sure. You, when I went to school, they had an excellent school at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and we learned everything, but we didn't ever use much of that. Sure. You were just shotgun. So, so what was your job then? Mechanic. Just 747, they called that. Okay. A 747. Yep. But you didn't troubleshoot the engine. If the engine was missing, replace engine. No, we would re repair it. Okay, cylinders uh, or carburetors. You know, it's brand new 65 Continental. What's going to go wrong? Yeah, pretty reliable. Bullet so this proof. is stateside. Yeah, okay. that was stateside. And then? Then when did you ship out? Well, let's see. We got transferred, went on maneuvers, come back out, went to uh, Camp Breckenridge, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And we were there for a few months, and we did more of the same. And there, I'd go to town in Evansville, Indiana, and I'd bought flying time. When I'd get a pass, I'd always go to the airport and do all those things before I use my money on beer. Oh. Which... Worked out wow. right. And they were building P-47s in Evansville. It was yeah, a P-47 plant there. Yeah, and Bentwig uh, Vought Corsair. Yeah, right, exactly. Big, big big was making a center section. Right, okay. And uh, a little center field out the edge of town. I could walk out there. Mm -hmm. Woman teacher sold me. Woman really? instructor. In a cub she, again? She'd been a wasp. Really? And the wasp business ran away. And sure. so she was out teaching. These people made a living on two airplanes. Wow. They had a Commonwealth Sky Ranger when it had only an 80 horse in it. Yes. And they had a Taylor Craft. There was three people taking care of those airplanes making a living. That's Gee. unbelievable. Oh, wow. So what'd you solo in? A Taylor Craft. Okay. A, a BC-12 or? Yeah, pre-war. Okay. All right. Uh, Cylinders out in the open. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was a really nice little airplane. Wow. And three like people it. supported three families with two airplanes. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Man, incredible. Well, a lot of, after the war, you know, that was still going on. It finally disappeared. So they were living pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Probably living in the hangars. Okay. Yeah. All right, so they're going to ship you out then. So well, you ship out. After we had a lot of training and spent some time, time to go overseas. So uh, I remember the train came to the camp and backed in like trains do and we're standing out there forever. Finally we get on the thing and the road all night long and all day the next day and on into the night we got off in New York, went to Camp Shanks. We was there a very short time. We got to go to town once and boy I didn't stray far from where I knew the bus station was. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you then? No, we were all, all, all of us were 18, plus or minus. Okay. In fact, they call us the diaper division. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, all right. So you're in New York, you don't want to get lost, so you're near the bus station. Okay, yep. you got to get back so to So I wasn't much impressed with New York. <laughs> we got on the, you, the HMS, what the heck was the name of that thing? It was a sister ship, the one that was shot down in war, or sister ship, the one that was sunk in War One. Oh. Uh, the hell was yeah, the Lufthansa. Aquitania. Aquitania. Aquitania? Monstrous thing. I oh, never wow. did see it. We went in the side of it in a hole. You checked your name and everything so they didn't get in many guys that weren't supposed to go over. Right. You went in there, you stayed on the ship until it arrived in Wales. It wasn't in Wales, it was Scotland, I think it was. Now, what year is this? 40? 43. Three? Yeah. Oh, so the war's still going. 44. 44. 44. Okay. So you got a year of war left. Yeah. They're still killing folks over there. Oh, yeah. So you got submarines are an issue on this trip. You, I mean, well, the wolf packs weren't as pronounced by then, obviously. They were making a headway. Well, they were making a lot game. of headway. The ship went this way. The old girl made it across in eight days. Wow. And they'd stop and shoot once in a while. They'd see something out there and shoot at it. And most of the time it was something drifting. Okay. <laughs> and we got off at, uh, I think it was Scotland. 
Everybody got out at launches. They had numerous launches. They'd pull up by this hole we came in on, everybody get in the launch, go to shore, and then they finally filled the train. Took forever, all day long, to empty that ship. Gee whiz. Got on the train, rode all night long, came out at Wales. Mm -hmm. And a little old quaint camp, colder than old Billy, <laughs> late in the fall. <laughs> okay. And had these little Mickey Mouse stoves about that big around, and they had peat. Peat won't burn. They didn't know that. <laughs> okay. So sure. we'd sneak up and we'd get coal from the kitchen, and that would make these little stoves just, we'd take the lining out, it was full of bricks. Pretty soon all the little stoves had a big bubble on the bottom where they got too hot. Yeah, sure. And we got dressed around about that, of course. Sure. Hmm. Finally, we got sent out. Our airplanes were here, and we were sent to the airport and our weapons carrier, which we'd been issued, to assemble them. Brand new one in a crate. And this English airfield was the gorgeous thing you ever saw in your life. It was all grass, it wasn't any hard runway whatsoever. It was permanent brick hangars. It was just beautiful. Wow. And we'd spend... Is this in Wales or England now? In Wales. Okay, yeah, it's pretty country. And Spitfires flying around, shooting landings, taking off in threes. Right near on you? grass. Yeah, right, wow. okay. How oh, do you get wow. anything done? Oh, God. <laughs> 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 okay, wow. All women there, all English boys were out fighting the war. Oh, my goodness. And there was precious few men and what there were old guys. Wow. And they'd have tea every day, which we were invited to. Sure. Some kind of fat pill and tea. <laughs> fat pill, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. Back to assembling an L4s. Wow. Finally got them all put together. Bulge had just started. Oh. All of a sudden, they had a big rush. We were shipped by train back to the port again. We all got on LSTs, and our airplanes were flown to Reims, not Reims, Reims sure. Belgium. Okay, Belgium, all right. Uh, France, well, hard, hard, hard of France or something. Yeah, well, we went in, the LSTs, it took two LSTs to contain a lot of the 75th that they needed. Okay. That wasn't all of it. We chained them together that night out in this English Channel, and then went on and came up in a place called Rouen. I know where we ran at. Where yeah. What's-Her-Face got burned at the post. Right. And it was really fun. Joan of Arc, yeah. Because we'd practiced, you know, letting the nose down and everybody running out and doing their thing. And so here we go, we're going to do it for real now. Yeah. No German problem there, up the road a ways. <laughs> okay. Down come the nose, out come the rigs, and the first rig disappeared in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Oh, no kidding. All right. So we're up there watching these ingeniouses, you know, screw <laughs> up the thing. <laughs> Pretty soon, something arrived up in the hill. We couldn't hardly see the top of this hill because we were all going to get off the boat and go up this hill and sure. enter whatever we are going to do. Yeah. And there was a World War I truck up there, and it threw them down a cable, and it pulled all this stuff back up the hill. Oh, no kidding. Same old circus, different tent. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right, sure. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And finally got, her, got to us, and we went up the hill, and I don't know how the rest of the deal went. The idea was to go find our airplanes. Okay. And they were at Liège. And the first night at Liège, when we finally got connected up, this is a big airport, just been north of town. And we had never seen a buzz bomb. Pretty soon, and then it goes whoop. That's yeah. when you got to watch out where you're at. Yeah. Because it dives right into the ground and has a tremendous explosion. Wow. Well, they were coming in all afternoon. And finally, everybody turned in for the night. And we found this old, which I think it was, was a parachute loft. Mm -hmm. Big, tall building that they could hang chutes off to dry them out. Sure. And a buzz bomb landed just outside of that thing. And every brick in it, out came a little dust mist and they're just the same shape as a brick and this whole thing kind of hesitated there for motor force started drifting to the ground. We all left there and finished sleeping outdoors. Holy smoke. And one airplane got hit and it just made nothing out of an L4 but it wasn't one of ours. Sure. How many L4s in your division? Well in the division there was four uh, units or operations and each had two airplanes and two pilots four mechanics. Okay. All right. So then you're stationed somewhere then? Well, we're temporarily when well, we got our act together. Okay. And then we got orders 
take off and go to a place called Grand Hello, Belgium. And it's just like the newsreels. There's all those people walking back towards town and they're shoving carts. And like, Jesus, it's just like the newsreel. <laughs> yeah, right. And we finally got to a place at Grand Hello. And all the hell fours there. It was snow on the ground that deep, colder than a wedge. Yeah. And I said, well, you get your gun emplacements and set up a place for the 50. And we had these little camp shovels. Clank, clank, clank. Ground was frozen solid. <laughs> yeah, okay. We clanked there most of the afternoon. We found a minor depression. <laughs> that night, everybody was, you know, hanging around. Couldn't have a fire. You sit out there and freeze. He says, German paratroopers are coming tonight. No kidding. Those are serious people. Sure. Never happened. Never happened. Never happened. Wow. What happened is the wind came up a little bit, and we had camouflage nets all over the airplanes. Crunch, crunch, crunch. There's somebody walking out there. No kidding. Crunch. <laughs> yeah. Gone to be. Bang, bang, <laughs> bang. People started shooting. Oh. Holes in the airplanes. Nobody was out there. Just these mosquitoes. Camouflage nets. Oh, and they started shooting at the, the noise? The airplane. So they were just shooting at the noise. Maintenance to do in the morning. <laughs> so they shot holes full in the airplane? Uh, I, never, I didn't do it. I wasn't going to shoot no airplane. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, gee, what, no kidding. All right. Uh, now, you, you actually got some flying time over there. Oh, yeah, coming up. Okay. Right anyway, around the corner here. Okay. The next thing, we're all out there in the morning hoping to get out of this miserable place. I don't know where we're going because we're going to freeze anywhere we're going. Yeah. Here comes two ME-109s. The weather was hideous. I don't think the ceiling was any taller than this building. Oh, Lord. And here comes these beautiful yellow noses, light camouflage, kind of a model gray and grayer, dark color. Okay. Standing out there, and you could see the guys in there looking. No kidding. Yeah. They're right on the deck. Right over on the, right over the top of us on the deck. Disappeared in a heartbeat. Everybody gets their 50s out. We didn't know yet that you never strafe twice. And they didn't even, we come on so fast they didn't strafe. Sure. They just wow. looked and probably cataloged it and disappeared in the muck. Yeah, I sure. doubt they could find us again. Man. It was really terrible weather. Good night. So from there, we moved on. <laughs> Where are we going next? Well, we started chasing Germans. And this went on, you know, we didn't get inside all winter long. We never got inside of a building. You were inside tents. We got pretty damn tough all winter long. And wow. they finally, when the bulge was finally over and they sent us all back, we got in billets, we all got sick. No kidding, yeah. once you got inside. The whole group. No kidding. Did you ever see a German? Ever what? You ever get eye contact with a German other than strafing you? Oh, you, Did you get lots, lots of times. Close, close. Yeah. Like yes. When they'd come over, well, one time there was a, a Falk Wolf. Yeah. And he was spotting along, I think it was long, no, it was a quad 50 out on the other side of us. And he was strafing it, and the quad 50 got him, and this airplane went straight up, just as far as it would go. It's still on full. I think they shot the pilot, and it kind of wallered around a little bit and turned around and really buried itself. And you witnessed that, huh? Yeah. Wow. That's, He's coming downhill. Oh, he was coming downhill. On. He hit the ground doing maybe 200. And it just, whoop. Vaporized. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a really neat looking airplane. That oh, 190 is gorgeous, 190. isn't it? Yeah, gee whiz. Anyway, okay. So then Jim says you got to do some flying over there. Well, after Maybe the not war so legally. Was over. Okay. And we were set up in different places. And they lost one airplane. Huh? He oh, lost you, you one. lost one of, your, one of your L4s? You lost one of the L4s? Well, yeah. One of the L4s, the guys took off and got the big banner that we mark our airstrip with, red fluorescent and blue fluorescent. Yes. Got it in the tail. It was a minimum airstrip anyway. It's just barely. These were 65 Continentals, pilots and the observer wore a parachute. They were gross when they took off with full mm -hmm. gas. Sure. And the thing didn't get off. They went to the hospital and we never saw them again. What happened to them, you never know. So on takeoff, they ran through the banner and... Take off, they got the banner hooked up on the tail wheel. Oh. And they just pulled it right it in the air. Yeah. Oh. Well, it slowed it down enough that it couldn't just fly. barely going to make it anyway. Then it went into the trees. And you don't know if they survived it or not. They survived, but how they made out in the hospital, yeah. I don't know, because they Gee, never rejoined really yeah. our outfit. No kidding. Wow. Okay. And finally the damn thing was over. And we were at 
Well, we had just been out. Oh, yeah, we did get supply. I forgot. We were, when the thing was over, we were at a place, Machete, Germany. And we were up in the beautiful place, a lot like around here. Mm -hmm. And we were up in the mountains. Actually, it was up in the Steptoe Buttes, Big Bear Hills. Okay. And there was a beautiful glider school up there. Well, the glider school was not in ruins, but it had been beat up some infantry going through and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They'd stayed there. It was, it was, had windows and everything, but it had been beat on pretty heavily. And there was a big building. You know how you have boats stored at the, when you go to the seashore? Sure. And you take number nine and you're a big building with a bunch of doors in it, and each one of these doors you open, and there's a boat, and they pull the thing out and lower it. Right. And that's yours for how long you rented it. Mm -hmm. Same with gliders. Wow. I think these were Huter 17s. Uh -huh. They were one place, and you'd read in German what your weight was and put in that many these pre-made weights and up in the nose. Sure. And that made it perfect. So, God, we wanted to fool around with those. And these are bungee launched? They had a, a, a winch up at the top of the hill. Oh, they did? Not running. Yeah. So we used a Jeep. So you, you got these gliders that are just abandoned we, and you're trying to figure this out? A whole building full of gliders. So you just went and took one? Just went up and got one, took it up the hill with the Jeep, assembled it. They were assembled. You remember the old Fords used to have a that little pin and then that little snap cap on the end, which served as a cutter key. Okay. Same deal. Right. And you had a little pair of pliers, you'd squish these together, put the cap in. There was two for the wings, there was one strutted outfit, bottom strut, top strut. It seems to me the tail was already on it. And it was narrow cord and short. And you just went out and started gliding. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're so bored. The first one I didn't, I wasn't flying the first one, and the guy driving the Jeep was looking back, went in a big curve, and the glider came, bonk, bonk, bonk. <laughs> oh, no. Go get another, we wrecked this one. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yep. Holy smoke. So you open a big door, pull a glider, put it together, drag it up the hill, and go yep. glider flying. Next one, we got it right. Yeah. And it was really a wonderful glider. Wow. It was a secondary. I mean, it was capable of soaring. <laughs> If you had a you know a monsoon going on, sure, or a tornado, yeah, but uh, it was a ball. We made one mistake. We never took the swastikas off, and somebody saw us gliding around with these swastikas. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like that. <laughs> didn't like that. <laughs> wow. Okay, not good. <laughs> so, they weren't that fun. Yep. I took one of the things and hit it out in the field, and I thought maybe I'll get back here. I sure. never did. I wonder whatever happened to that glider. Oh no, kidding. Yeah. Wow. Because in the 30s, those were big time, those glider areas. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Germans, uh, this place had sailplanes, and the infantry had run over the sailplanes with vehicles, and they were destroyed totally. Oh, wow. But they never touched this whole barn full of wow. secondaries. Wow. That would be neat to have. Oh, and this glider placed old native rock. It was gorgeous. Wow. And if you could, it was quite a ways up in the hill. The first hill was a big glassy slope, grassy slope. You could come down and land in the bottom. If you got a few thermals, you could go clear over the second hill and clean down to the little town below. Wow. I think that's where we got in trouble with the swastika. Yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I didn't like that. Not good. Wow. So you got some power time over there too, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Well, tell us about that. When, well, when we finally got broken up in our outfit and a lot of our troops were dispersed and it was no longer a division. <clears throat> we were sent to Chalons, France. Mm -hmm. And Chalons, France was pretty flat. Uh, <clears throat> it was a place they had brought all the L4s and the outfits that were deploying. The idea was you should take these guys that don't have so many points and you base them there. And they process all these guys that are coming through. And we got all this manpower and we take care of it. Well, you're not going to take a GI off the line and put him in front of a typewriter. Nothing's going to happen, and it didn't. Right. So they found that out, of course. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, they had deployed their, or taken their L4s and flown them to Reims, which was maybe 60, 70 miles down the road. Okay. Tied them at the big Reims airport, and there was rows and rows and rows of them. And this one, they'd busted the gear leg on it, or the gear tore it off. One wing bent back a little bit, not too bad a shape, out in what they were using for an airstrip in this meadow. Sure. 
So I went out and looked at that, and I thought, geez, I can fix this thing up, no sweat. Okay. I've got to find some parts. So I got some reams. And some of my buddies had been stationed there taking care of all these airplanes. Got everything I needed. No problem. Now, how do you get the parts out? Well, whatever vehicle you took, you could bring it back. Like tie it underneath the car. Well, I hadn't got there yet. Okay. This All right. was, <laughs> it's coming. I got to, <laughs> Sorry. I got to pass to Paris somewhere. And while I was gone, they said, Carlson's been flying that airplane there. And by then I had it flying and it was successful. So they took the tire, one wheel off and it, took the ignition harness out and the propeller and called salvage to have come and get it. Well, it was also what we used to try to fit the tubing out of, a bamboo bomber that he used for a communications rig. Mm -hmm. And we used the tubing in that. They crashed it. Oh. It was not an airstrip you could ever get a bamboo bomber in. Yeah, right, they okay. Didn't. Sure. It all bundled up on the end. What's that? His um, oh. uh, so it served a lot of parts that I needed. And so, you got some helpers in this, right? Oh, some yeah. German well, helpers? Well, we was all, while we were there, they had a German prison camp. And the idea was that they'd take, like me, and I'd get issued eight, nine Germans, and we'd go out there, you know how the Army loves to pick up little bits of paper. And yeah, that, 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 <laughs> oh, sure. And yeah, I can do that forever. <laughs> okay. And we were sent out, oh, you clean up the area, I believe is the terms they used right, for that. Right, okay. So it didn't take me long to find out that one of my guys was a good welder and the other one was a mechanic. <laughs> so I took the ones that was useful. Yeah. And... <laughs> Gave one of them my helmet and my rifle and says, oh, you, do, you see what we've been doing. <laughs> and when you're with the Germans, you don't talk either one, talk your language, but you can figure it out. Yeah, okay. And these guys would be out there picking up things. While the so you got German them. prisoners wearing your helmet and your gun, yeah. walking uh, yeah. so you yeah. can be working on the airplane. They were going to leave because the French would kill them if they got out of the oh, camp. Oh, sure, right. Well, <laughs> so, nothing wrong with the plan. It was working wonderful. <laughs> okay, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy could weld, and he's helping yep, you do this repair work. Yep, we had to saw a piece out of the bamboo bomber because it had bent the wing back, and the carry-through tube mm -hmm. from one rear bar to the other was bent. Yes. I had to straighten that out. Made a little problem there welding, and they had a little sweat back in that wing. Yes. Didn't affect the airplane. Wow. We finally got the airplane all set to go, and... The cook, cook's helper, and I were pretty good buddies, and so he liked aviation. So we took the airplane, pushed the airplane out farther away so I couldn't see it from camp. I test hopped it. That you test hopped some... the bamboo bomber or the cup? No, no the, cup. the bamboo bomber was. You, you're, you cannibalized the bamboo bomber yeah, to, to fix the, the cup. cup. Yeah. And the cubs got the sweet back. Yeah. Out. Got but it. Then, <laughs> when I got this pass and come back, they had taken my wheel, prop, and ignition harness. And right. Somebody tattletale and said, I've been flying that thing. So I've got to get to town. I said, this is not going to fly. So I went down to the motor pool and I got a trip ticket, what they called it, mm -hmm. to go to Reims. And I had passengers. Okay. Turned out to be the RCO and some of his honchos. And, God, how am I going to work this? <laughs> and the command car's got a trunk. It's a big, tall, ugly thing. Yeah, right. So I took them in and they wanted to go to the officer's club. And the CEO said, okay, Carlson, you're going to the enlisted man's mess, and, and he'll be back here 1,300 hours. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Tore out to the airport. <laughs> I got a wheel and propeller <laughs> and ignition harness. Put the wheel and ignition harness in the trunk, and now how am I going to do the propeller? Well, I went in, and I got a mattress cover, which was a cotton thing. Right. Wrapped the prop up in it, tied it up under the weapon of the command car, <laughs> and went and picked the guys up. Now, these are your commander officers. They're in the car. And you He's got these... the guy that stole it, so it serves him right. Oh, sure, that's right. So this is a good way to get your parts back, to get your airplane fixed that they took the parts off of. Yeah. Okay, I got he that. He didn't know that they were coming Makes back good right sense, behind you. It does. It makes yeah, perfect sense. perfect plan, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So we was coming back, and these old things ride hard, and the French roads were, you know, a lot of tar strips, bonk, bonk. Pretty soon, this damn propeller's getting loose, and it's going boom, boom, ding. <laughs> and I looked out the side, and the sun is setting. And on the cuts in the road, you can see this mattress is already starting to flop. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we come by a cut in the road, I'd point out something scenic on the other side sure. to get away from the cut. <laughs> right. And finally, Carlson better check this vehicle over when we vehicle. Never call it a car. So <laughs> right. Check this vehicle over when we get back to the base. Yes, sir. <laughs> so when I got out of the thing, I cut me a hole in the fence, 
<laughs> I didn't turn around my trip ticket. Wait till everybody went home, come back, opened up the fence, got all my necessary stuff, put the fence back together, turned out the airplane, got my cook buddy, and we got the wheel on it, pushed it out there, going to work on a harness tomorrow, can't do that out there behind the camp. Right. And great success. And you were able to fly it again? Yep. Now you ran into well, Eisenhower? Luckily, they shipped out the first sergeant, most of the, the old crew was shipped to different places. All the officers went somewhere was better than where we were. And so I, the first thing I said, I've got to get my name off the roster if I'm going to have any fun with this thing. Mm -hmm. So I got in the order of the room and found the roster. We got a new first sergeant. He didn't even know who I was. And I put detached service on my name. And I got in my cub the next morning and flew away. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere you want to go, go see Europe, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's probably gone for uh, a couple of weeks or so. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Just flying around anywhere Just you want. Just flying around. You land. I, I found some liaison fields. I could land and gas up. And I had my my captain got to be made. Uh, no, he was a lieutenant. He got my captain. So I had his old hat and his bar, and he gave me a coat that was kind of like this thing, but yeah. it had soda on bars. Well, it was a little fuzzy, so you could admit them or deny them. Yeah, okay, sure. And so if I, when I was getting gas, I'm a lieutenant. When I'm around the camp, I'm a private. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure, right. He could be a, like a chameleon. Same deal. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Okay. And, God, we, we just had a great time with that thing. I had a couple of buddies. I'd drop one off and... He had a girlfriend at the Red Cross place on the way to Reams. I'd go to Reams, visit my buddies, come back, pick him up. He'd have sweet talk to his girlfriend out of a whole box of Baby Ruth or Butterfinger candy bars. Mm -hmm. And we'd go out the next morning in the Cub and circle some little French village, land in a meadow, and sell all these things. Oh, no kidding. Oh. And we'd make a we'd fill a thing in the back full of money. <laughs> <laughs> now, one day, didn't you run across Eisenhower's DC-4 or something? Well, that was... Coming up. Okay, all right. I gotta be patient. Uh, we Smack me. <laughs> okay. We just have a Baby great. This was the greatest thing I ever experienced. You know. <laughs> free gas. <laughs> all free candy airplane. Free so, airplane. Yeah. Everything I needed. <laughs> okay. You just needed a way to get home. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we got transferred to Paris. <laughs> What am I going to do with my flying machine? <laughs> Take it into Reims and I'll tie it down with the rest of them. Because we're going to not stay in Paris forever. Mm -hmm. So I did. And we were in Paris for oh, a couple, three months. Going to transfer to Frankfurt, Germany. I got a hold of a map, found out how the train got to Frankfurt, went back through Reims. Great. Mm -hmm. So I jumped the train in Reims. Right in Reims is a terrible pass down because a humongous MP battalion there. Whole unit. Lots of champagne. And you too. couldn't walk around Reams without getting asked for your pass a dozen times. Oh, sure, okay. So I thought, well, I'm right across the street was the headquarters for this whole outfit. Well, there's guys on all the time, MPs are out doing duty, so there's got to be a lot of empty beds. So I just walked right over there and had dinner with them, picked out a cot, flaked out. The next morning at breakfast, asked if anybody, I got the day off, is anybody going out by the airport? Yeah. The guys rose a hand. Told them what I needed, and they said, well, I'll take you, we'll drop you off. So I rode out to the airport with these guys, took my musette bag, and went in there. They took off. My airplane's sitting there. And it's been there for three there's months. No bus, you know, troop teams take forever to get where they're going. Yeah. So I spent the whole day getting cowlings off other airplanes, better one, mm -hmm. putting better windows in it, <laughs> landing gear legs that had fabric on it. Oh, dressed her up really good. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Painted the number off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next morning, the plan is to go to Frankfurt. Which way is Frankfurt? Uh, that, uh, okay, all I need to know. Okay. Well, Frankfurt's is bigger than Chicago. I had no idea. Yeah, you know, big see in Frankfurt, guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> this yeah. was going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. <laughs> so, it was windy, very windy that morning. In fact, I had to kind of slip and sit out on the side of the thing and keep it level. Mm -hmm. Taxi it out to the runway. Sure. Got a light. Kind of didn't run from me to Doris getting off. Oh, wow. Okay. I got up in the air, and the farther I'd get up in the air, the windier it was. Pretty soon I'm looking down there, and we're not moving. Uh oh. Well, I got a lot of time. You know, Jesus is going to take those guys a week to get to Frankfurt. I'll just go see where the wind's going. Yeah. Did a 180 and ended up in Brussels, Belgium, in an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> <in France. laughs> 
<laughs> and I had no idea where I was. <laughs> and you're well, not making this up. No. <laughs> That's no, the no. incredible no. part. Okay, all right. So I thought, best thing to do is get low. I understand the wind doesn't blow as hard very low. Yeah. And I come to an airport, and I went by it like a misfits baseball. <laughs> <laughs> The next airport I'm not going to miss. <laughs> Here it comes. Well, I can see it a long ways up there. And we were, it must have been a 60, 70 mile an hour wind. Boats were wrecked oh on the beach. And they weren't coming to port. I mean, it was a mess. I come down there and I'm really low and I turn around and I get her into the wind. And here comes a lorry and a bunch of guys. And they weren't our guys, but I know the war is over, so they weren't the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And the airplane is just barely moving and it's rough. and ready and finally I get down close and these guys grabs the strut and pulls her down and puts her on the ground and that's the only I'd have got she'd have went on her back without a doubt sure and then we trucked it or pulled it with a Walked truck it, I shut yeah. her off up to a bunker uh -huh. and a bunker over there is a hangar that's very tough and covered with dirt so it stand a bombing sure well inside this bunker there's a mosquito bomber and I'm looking at the airplanes after we parked this thing. And, what, what's this over here? Well, that's a mosquito bomber that helped. One of the airplanes that bombed Birch's Garden. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was neat. Well, we'll take you down to headquarters and you can sign in and everything. I'm a lieutenant now. Mm -hmm. so I rode down there with him. It's a nice little building right alongside the edge of the base. The outdoors is right here, a gate. And I thought, you know, a guy that's probably dressed up Represent an officer that he's not one, and I got a hot airplane, and this is where he's supposed to be. Probably had not to go sign in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not <laughs> a so good plan. So I got, went in the map room, and I got the maps I needed, and walked right out in the street, caught a trolley, and went to town. Mm -hmm. And I thought about this for about three or four days. Had a great time in town. Had a lot of money. Yeah, from your <laughs> from I, selling candy bars. From selling candy bars. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Thought I better start cracking and find Frankfurt all over again. Yeah. And I'm farther than I was before. Yeah, right. You're going the wrong way, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So I come out and there's lots of GIs with nothing to do and they're wandering around and so it's not unusual for you to walk over to this bunker. Uh huh. I got over there and there's a bunch of guys working on the mosquito bomber. I'm looking at it. And everybody's getting along good, you know. And I'm looking at the mosquito bomber and they're telling me about the raid on Birch's Garden. And What's this over here? Oh, that's quite amazing. That's when the thing come in during the big wind. And the guy didn't sign in, and, and the guard comes around, and he stops, and he checks it every trip as he goes around the airport, every 15 minutes. No kidding. <laughs> what would you do if the guy come in and was his? We'd let him have it. No skin off our nose. <laughs> I don't think they got along with the MPs at all. Yeah, uh, okay, this yeah. is good. Sure, right. He's got to let he you says, have the Well, airport. it was me. Oh, come on now. How, prove it. Well, look up under the top of the instrument. So on the instrument, you'll find my Luger. What I went over. Sure enough. <laughs> what do you want to do? I want to leave. <laughs> well, I know about the MPs. So I said, well, they took my gas. They didn't take my propeller. And that's all they took was the gas. Yeah. So we took gas out of the Mosquito Bomber. It's 130. It really made the... Really 65 good. run good. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> filled it up, got three jerry cans, filled them up, jerry cans everywhere, thicker than grass. Yeah, sure. And I decided I'll shove it out as soon as the MP goes by. I'll warm it up, I'll shove it back in. When he comes by again and checks it and he leaves, I'll jump out, push it out, goodbye. <laughs> okay. Okay. And we'll tell him some cock and bull story. Don't worry about that. Pushed her out, run it, pushed it back in. It's ready, it's ready to go. MP, and you got this 15-minute window to pull us off. Huh? You have a 15-minute window to make yeah, this happen. Yeah. Right, okay. And we push this back in. He comes. He didn't really get out and look at it. He can see it. You know, that's all he needed. Mm -hmm. Goes on. I come out from the mosquito bomber, pushes it out there, starts it up. And there's a line of Lancasters right in front of me, and they're gassing up. There's a gas truck going down there. And there maybe, oh, a block away. I'll be off the air before I even come to them. Mm -hmm. Gave it the needle, and boy, the next thing I know, there's guys jumping off ladders and throwing hoses and everything else, and I'm, you know, right between them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I disappeared off to the left, and there's a big black cloud out there, and it's raining like Hades. Oh. Disappeared the rainstorms. I didn't know if they were pursuing me or they had no idea what took place. Right, okay. <laughs> Wow. And I was in the rain for an hour. 
Oh, wow. Come out of the rain and the figures, everything looks nice. And better land and find out where we're at. So I figures we should be in Germany. And there's a guy, they, they put urine on all the fields over there and have a special cart to do it. They save it from the cows and the people and everything. Fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I landed and walked over to him and put and talk. And, Hair? <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he got France. France. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. Well, he showed me on the map where I was. Well, we're doing great. You know, the Rhine River's only, oh, God, maybe 70 miles okay. the way we're going. Sure. He invited me to stay the night. His kid had just got back from the German army. He was forced into serving. Sure. Well, that night we had dinner and a whole bit, talked. And, Seems kind of funny as German. He still got his uniform on. Me too. Yeah. He just didn't have a dinner in a farmhouse in France. Yeah, yeah. Nice little farmhouse. Nice people. <laughs> yeah. So the next morning, I filled her up with the extra jerry cans I had and the extra gas that I didn't need. I gave the farmer and all. God, he was jubilant. They just didn't get gas for all during the war. Sure. Yeah. Right. And took off. Gave him a buzz job. Uh -huh. Headed for the Rhine. Sure. Well. Cologne was north of me, the Rhine's going this way, and Frankfurt on Main was a little not quite sure about that. Frankfurt on Main means Frankfurt on the Main and Frankfurt on the Rhine. Mm -hmm. Well, the first town you come to is on Main. That's a little big airfield, but not much of a town. I knew better than that, so I figured out. And besides it, a nice looking airstrip, and it's got real fancy, big hangars. I need a I need a landing mat, rinky dink old place. Mm -hmm. Went up the Rhine, went up the main river. Where the hell's Frankfurt? Jeez. <laughs> Pretty soon it starts getting houses. Miles and miles of buildings. They're hollow. You look right down into them. All miles of huh? Like Chicago with no roofs. Yeah, the bombed whole out. Whole huh? place. Wow. Been bombed and bombed and rebombed. Wow. Finally I come to a big airport and it's all landing mat. I'm just right. Yeah, okay. Got in a pattern, I come around, got a light, and so I'm coming by. Here's this DC-4 with a row of stars on the front. <laughs> I'll be damned. I don't suppose that is. <laughs> Went ahead and landed. <laughs> Boy, here comes a yellow Jeep, all checkerboard out, and follow me, you know. And Jesus, this is a little bit bigger than I planned. <laughs> right. yeah. You better do this good. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Hold right up to Operations Shack, and that guy says, Would you like to service, sir? Oh, yeah, fill her up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. Are you a lieutenant now? I'm a lieutenant. You're a lieutenant, lieutenant again. Okay. So he says, uh, you have to report into the place. You got to better do it this time. I'll <laughs> play it by ear. Mm -hmm. Well, there, the sergeant threw me a clipboard. And I looked at it, and I went about three up and copied what that guy put, and threw it back to him <laughs> like I did this every day. Yeah, yeah. Right, sure, right. <laughs> and he looks at it, hung it up. Yeah. He said, you need transportation, sir? Yes, I do. <laughs> Here okay. comes a corporal with a Jeep. He didn't know he outranked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so, took it all day long, and I got there reasonably early to find the 75th Infantry Division. They were out in the old Wormhawks barracks, way out in the edge of town. How long had they been there? Oh, when I got there, that was the first roll call we was going to have. Oh, no. You timed it that perfect? Oh, couldn't have done it better. It took them that long to get there. <laughs> yeah. And you're out. Well, I was gone for better than a week, but they were getting... You know, they hadn't been there all that long, and of course there's no roll call on the train. So the old first sergeant, this guy was a wizard, and I think he knew when I wasn't with him all yeah, the way right. up there. And so he was going to have this roll call. And I told the guys, you know, if, if I'm out there yet, you cover for me. We'll do it. Mm -hmm. So we had this falling out. And everybody's lined up out there. And the old first sergeant, he's being a C, I'm pretty early, about two guys before me, and then it's Carlson. Yeah. Here, here. <laughs> no sergeant, he studies that minute. He's got an echo in here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the guy Try covered. it again. Carlson, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no kidding. Wow. So, hung around there and, you know, did duties which were minimal. Sure. We had Germans doing the KP and all the bad stuff. We had somebody else doing that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, geez, I missed that airplane. I'm going to, I'm going to go get that damn thing. So I went across the highway from the, the old barracks, scouted around in there, and found a pretty damn good place to land an airplane. Mm -hmm. 
got it all set up, took a camouflage net out there and got it all done and one of the guys took me to the airport. It was a hell of a long ways out there, as a matter of fact. And I thought, probably the best thing to do is walk right up to it, light it, and leave. Everybody in that little operation shack, busy, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. and so that's the way I did it. Taxied out, got a green light, and I left. Went out to the barracks, you know, and, yep, there's one. Looks good, landed, hit the airplane. Put a camouflage net on it, couldn't see it. Flew it quite a bit around there. One, oh, the Rhine River is beautiful. And there's castles on both sides of the thing, you know, and you go down there and circle them. Geez, I always had one of my buddies with me. Mm -hmm. So this one time I'm going flying, and I, the gas thing was up that tall, you know. You got in it and took off, and it quit. And I landed in a bunch of little trees and junk, the kind that the airplane would bend over, but I tore an awful lot of fabric off the fuselage. Mm -hmm. Goddamn German had stolen gasoline and then crimped his stem so it wouldn't... Oh, no kidding. They're still fighting, apparently. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll tear some of it. I'll cut the fabric evenly so I don't tear anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about going home. I better maybe turn this thing in and quit. If they ever catch me, God, I'll be here forever. Yeah, sure. So in I jail. did. It's this one hour strip that they've been giving me gas. And I don't know, the guys always didn't look quite right, like I wasn't for real, but I was a lieutenant, so I must be all right. Mm -hmm. But you're too damn long to be a lieutenant, and I mm -hmm. knew that. Mm -hmm. But it was working, who cares? Sure. <laughs> so Gee, it was. Went into this office and I said, well, you got yourself a new airplane. What are you talking about? I just gave you that one back there. I took the compass out of it, and I, said, I should have taken the whole dashboard. And that compass, well, What are we going to do with it? We can't justify it. Goodbye. No kidding. Yeah. That's the last time you saw it. Last time I saw it. And that compass you have in your L4 today. Yep. Same one. Same one. <laughs> Isn't that a great story? <laughs> wow. All right, we're going to spin ahead. you are come back stateside now. Okay. War's over. You're back in Spokane. You're not I in the military. Went to Tacoma. My mother lived in you Tacoma. You went to Tacoma. Okay. Got out of... Well, there was only a very few guys going to the West. Most of these guys were Easterners in the 75th. Mm-hmm. So I had two Goonie birds. They, these were funny deals. These airplanes were OD with Northwest Airlines pilots in uniform. Flying. With seats in them. You know how flying, a, yeah. a but GI airplane has got the seat you can't right. see out the window because right. in the middle of your back. Yeah, right. And so these have got airline seats, but airline they're Airline seats in an OD airplane with Northwest Airlines guys flying them. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how that all worked, but I didn't question it much. And they pedaled you all the way out to Tacoma. Yep. All the way to Tacoma, McCord. Mm-hmm. Seems to me we landed a Grays and went over to McCord or however it was done. Okay. And uh, first, the first thing to get right down to business, boy, I want to get rid of these guys. They all want to go home and started processing. Got out at 10.30, February 22nd. I was very fond of the Army, and I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, 10.30, February 22nd. Wow. Yeah. So you went to see your mom then. Yeah. So I had a barracks bag full of treasures and all that stuff. And, they also told us you can't bring more than so much money home. So everybody was getting rid of their money right and left. Mm -hmm. Didn't need to do that at all. Them dirty buggers. You could have kept it. And wow. You can't bring any U.S. items home. A lot of guys brought all kinds of stuff. I took the face off my compass and had it in a different sack. Sure. Because it said U.S. on it. Right. Enough compass to tack. Yeah, okay. And uh, not, not necessary. No There's kidding. A bunch of crap. So what are you doing then after the war? You got to earn your income. Well, it was pretty neat. They had what they called a 5220 club. 5220, okay. You got $20 for 52 weeks. Really? And $20 had pretty good mileage in those days. You had sure. to buy beer, airplane gas, and then other creature comforts. <laughs> okay. So for 52 weeks, yep. you get $20 a week. Yeah. It's $100 a I month. I don't think I got that. I had mustering out pay, which amounted to maybe 1500 bucks. Because I never got paid from the time I went over there. Okay, wow. And 1500 bucks was pretty damn good then. It had sure. some mileage. Right. So the first thing I did was I, I didn't have any wheels, and I got it out to out to the little airport just south of Tacoma, mm -hmm. Ben Barry's Field. It's out in the Tide Flats. Okay. And so I was looking for an airplane to buy. Well, I got two of them, and they're out in South Tacoma in a barn, stored. Mm-hmm. They couldn't fly their airplanes over in the coast when the war was on. Sure, it took the so propellers off. Yeah. Okay. So, 
Went out and looked at them, and there was a nice big old Traveler 2000 with an OX in it. There's oh, really? Student Prince. Yeah. Traveler was 500 bucks. Student Prince was seven. Well, I don't want to use all my money on one airplane, even though. And the student prince needed some work. It had a cracked case, he told me. Okay. So I bought the Travel Air. A, a, a 2000. Got to be good, isn't it? A 2000 with an OX 2000 on with it? an OX. Really? Yeah. Just like Jim Miller's? Yeah. Pri prior, his was yeah, a 2 before he right. converted it. Okay. And wow. so old Ben Berry was the guy's name. He loaned me his dump truck. I'd go out there and tie the tail up there on the back of the bed and trundle it home out to the airport. Got the wing, two trips, first few slides, and then brought the rings in the bed, tail and the rest of the stuff. And a couple of guys around there helped me assemble it. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you got to get a license. Well, I don't need to, do I? Who's going to see me? Mm -hmm. Well, I had a guy by the name of Arnold Cassidy who was in charge of the trade school. Uh, he'll do it for 20 bucks. Yeah, we'll do it then. Okay. So old Arnold come out, and he looked it over. Didn't have any inspection holes in it. Didn't bother Arnold any. Yeah. Looked good. <laughs> Looked I don't think good. we even checked the fabric. We had to pull the cylinder off because they'd lost the logs. We didn't know how many time was on the engine. So sure. we pulled the cylinder, determined some time, Yeah. put it back together, and flew it. Wow. Out of Tacoma. Out of Tacoma. No kidding. And it was, you know, I'd, I'd flown nothing but L4s and what I'd trained in, right. which was Luscombs and Interstates and T-Birds. So the first thing you flew it was kind of blind. Yeah. Yeah. But... He said, got away with it fine, flew it around there, went to, went anywhere, wherever we wanted to go, run into a guy, old Coomer, mm -hmm. and he'd go with me everywhere. And we, you know, we never gave it any consideration as a World War One engine. We just go where we wanted to go. Yeah, sure. And it kept her running. Wow. And oh, I had some problems, and we figured them out. Like one time, the exhaust gaskets burnt springs or melted the slag, the sagged the springs on the exhaust. Oh, she got it and kneeled them. Yeah. Right. But there was, you know, finding OX parts was no problem. I'd go up to Boeing in Seattle and hunt around. Pretty soon I'd come home with everything I needed. Wow. Yeah. Now, how long were you in Tacoma then? Maybe six months. And then you came back over to Spokane? Yeah. Did you bring the, the Traveler with I you? I told the guy come by and one day and he wanted that Traveler. Give you 700 bucks. God, that's making 200. I go back and buy the student print. You did? Yeah. The one you still have today? Yeah. So that was the first airplane, the second airplane you owned? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, first airplane I owned was the Vili Monaco, but I never flew it. Okay. I didn't have a license. I didn't know how to fly. I didn't know anything. Sure. And it came off that Metropolitan Record paper route. Wow. A guy from Seattle came over to Spokane. He was going up to Canada and joined the RAF. And that's why you do it. And this was maybe in 39. Sure. And so we had to sell the airplane. I bought it for 125 bucks. And he went up and joined the RAF, and I never did know what happened to him. Now, did you have a ticket at this point? No. You're still. You just flew the Prince over to see it, to Spokane. Oh, you, oh, yeah, yeah. You had a ticket then. Uh, didn't have, didn't have a ticket. Had a student ticket. You had a student ticket, so you could fly by yourself. I had a buddy I took with me. Yeah. And uh, of course, he might have been a student, and two students are as good as a two students as good as one license. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just as good. Yeah. I figure. If you can solo and I can solo, we can then, solo together. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I got that. All right. So you you pedaled the student over the prince over this side of the hill. But what brought you back to Spokane then? I like Spokane lots better than Seattle, Tacoma. So, but your mom's on the wet side. Yeah. And well, we, my dad and grandma and everybody else still lived over here. Okay. And. uh this friend of mine, he come over, and we did what we thought was necessary to Prince to get it going. The weather was putrid. The first time, took off, and the oil pressure disappeared about in a half an hour, and landed an enum claw. Mm -hmm. The guy there come out. He was pretty knowledgeable, and said, "Well, why don't you try another oil pressure gauge? There's an old C3 back of the hangar, which I bought also. 125 bucks. Really? Took the oil pressure gauge out of it." Put it in the print. The only thing was wrong was the oil pressure gauge. Oh no, kid! So my friend he hitchhiked over, and I flew the airplane over because the weather was marginal. And you brought it to Feltz? Brought it to Ellensburg, gassed her up, and yeah. then he and I both brought it to Feltz. And that, that's where it was based initially. Yep. When you moved yep. to town, you moved back to town. Yep. And then you had a job here then? Well, not yet. 
Okay. I haven't been. I still got a lot of fifty-two twenty club to okay. see. Okay. All, right. all right. All right. <laughs> so I bought a PT twenty-three back in Cape Girado. Good night. Hitchhiked or train, bus, whatever it took to get back to Cape Girado. Four hundred and thirty-nine bucks or something like that. You got five cents a mile for being a veteran. Yes. And twenty-five percent off of the initial price. It was eight hundred and damn near nine hundred bucks. I got it for. I think it was three eighty-two. Really? Yeah. Went back there, field full of the things. There was hundreds of them. They got to the big list. So you looked at the list and the time on the airframe and the engine. Well, I wanted a good engine. All the airplanes looked pretty much alike. Yes. So I picked out one of the 400 hours since new on the engine. Mm -hmm. It was an Aeronica, bad choice. They didn't even have fabric on the wings. They had veneer covering, but just painted. Really? Yeah, they were all lifting. So these are Ronkabel Fairchilds, and yeah. they didn't seal the wood. Ronkas and Howards. And Howard was building them too. Yeah. But no fabric over the over the wood, so the wood was deteriorating. Yeah. Okay. And Howard would have been a better choice. Well, Howard is still, you know, even uh, got the contract to do it, they still went first class. Oh, sure, right. Wow. Did you bring that airplane back here then too? Yeah. So you've been out of the military 52 weeks, and you've owned a Traveler, a Student Prince, an Aronka C3 project, and the PT-23. And an L-4, which I didn't bring, bring home, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. It's incredible. In 52 weeks. Wow. First year. Uh, went back to get the PT-23. They just, they was furnishing gas up to Lynn. About the time I got there, they were no longer furnishing gas. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was a bunch of bums because there was a guy selling tools right across the highway and I know damn well that they'd taken the tools out of the airplane and set up a little shack and sure. selling tools. Well, everything was cheap, like a couple bucks for the tools you needed. Right. And the airplane had gassed it up, didn't have any maps. Well, how do you run these flaps? I was asking the guy that mowed the lawn. Well, that wasn't the guy to ask. Yeah. In fact, he had to go out and find me a tile because he ran a damn lawnmower into the tire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He just took wheel and over. <laughs> yeah, moves it over, thing. sure. So, uh, got it started, you know, and well, uh, still couldn't find anybody to do anything about what those flaps did. Right. I knew they were for slowing down. When do you use them and how? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys don't know anything. I'm gassed up. Where's the runway? <laughs> Take off anywhere you want. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I taxied up this kind of a little knoll. It was all concrete. Come down through there, and there's plenty of room. And it's a shack where they did all the business, right over here. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd never had an airplane that had any torque. Yeah. I gave this whole thing the needle, and away we went down the hill. Turn and left. Man, it wants to go left really bad. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm giving it all the rudder I can give it, and I still didn't. I still going left, and that shack's coming up. I better get this thing in the air. Well, it was ready. Right over the shack, everybody come running. Oh, what a damn fool! What <laughs> no, kid. Holy smoke! You just about cream. Okay. So, got up in the air, and I figured, well, the best thing to do is go till I phone to an airport and land and find out where the hell we are, so we can sort this thing out. Right. Buy a map, maybe. Yeah. Come to, not Egypt. Or maybe it was Egypt. It was right on the Mississippi. Good night. And landed, and there was a B-17 there. Yeah. I said, God, I can, it looks sharp, but there's that 17 there, there's no problem. Right. I landed, and man, I got the brakes on, and I tried these flaps out, and then yeah. they were pretty nice. Well, the B-17, they trucked in for a War II memorial. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So this, uh, this thing's 1,200 feet long or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Gee whiz. So, <laughs> bought my gas, studied the thing, found out where I was. Did my farewells and took off. I thought I'd go back to Evansville, Indiana, visit my old buddies there in town, and sure. fiddle around, and kind of had a great time coming home. Well, about the time I left, there was two guys in a tailor craft, and they were going about the same place, two-thirds of the way home, same direction I was. Now, all this money you had, this 5220, is in your pocket all this time? Oh, no, you'd get it monthly. But, I mean, it would be mailed to your mom or something? You didn't need that much. I probably started out with... Had a, had a, what the heck did I use? We used to buy a, find out what the airplane was and yeah. called home and they sent me a, a well, your money name. order or something to okay. buy the airplane with. So you're getting home on $100 or whatever. I could probably get home on, I think I had three and I even bought gas out of that. Good night. 
Yeah. Oh, Holy smoke. You don't realize what a good world this was. <laughs> <laughs> so you're seeing America in this 23. You haven't yeah. been with your buddies and yeah. pedaling home? In fact, I started a little low on money, and so I stopped at a bus station once and got a guy in line waiting. And, How'd you like to fly? Sound like a better deal than a bus. <laughs> Took him out to the airport. He had a suitcase. That was a problem. He had to hold it on his lap. Oh, yeah, Hold okay. it up there like I got the thing going. How did he clear the stick? No kidding. Yeah. Wow. So, so, you, so you were your home. first airline job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you flew this all the way back to Spokane. <laughs> yeah. Had a little problem at Laramie, Wyoming. And he still doesn't have a ticket. Laramie's a little windy. <laughs> no, Laramie's but a little windy and a little high. Huh? Laramie's a little high and a little windy. 7,270 yeah, I know that feet town. above sea level. Yeah. Well, I'm turning along. Sea devil, huh? <laughs> I, I, I was going to stay at Cheyenne. Well, the money's getting low. And frontier days are on. Doc says that's the only weather in, in Cheyenne, Wyoming, is winter and frontier days. There isn't anything else. <laughs> you know how you know when the wind's not blowing in Wyoming? Everybody's on the ground. Everybody's leaning over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Terrible place. Yeah. It's, oh, man. Anyway. I thought I better keep it going and I can get to Laramie. Every bit counts, you know. Mm -hmm. So I took out of there this afternoon, really late. And not far from evening. When I got over the hill, it was night. And I'm turning along, and pretty soon I'm dropping RPMs. Uh oh. Big white clouds of smoke coming out of the exhaust. Hey. Jerked on the carburetor heat. I'd already pulled it on. Sure. She should come out another inch or so. It had been kind of stuck. Yeah. It wasn't all the way on, and that's right. worse than having it on or off. Right. So she's starting to settle, and I come over what must have been the Summit Cafe and gas station, and everybody comes running out. <laughs> 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 Made it to the downside of the highway, and it's pretty steep. Wow. And the highway and the mountain and the PT all descended about the same amount, so I kept a sky under me all the way. Wow. But it hadn't stopped. It was still backfiring, carrying on. So I got down to the other side and says, what's everybody got their lights on for? It's dark over here. What the hell? Well, it was, you know, when the sun's on the other side. Yeah, it gets dark. Yeah. Right. So I decided to land on the highway, and everything else was sprinkled with great big boulders. Yeah. So I planned it out, you know, and I got over, and I come over this one guy, and I got it on the ground, and I'm trying to feed the white line right up the middle of the rocker boxes on number one. And yeah. Working pretty good. Yeah. I heard this hell of a noise off on the right. <laughs> Oh, it was on them posts with the oh, reflectors no. on it, and a lot of plywood flying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Jeez, unbelievable! <laughs> Cars coming the other way. I got to deal with that. Uh, I'm to deal with that right now. So I hit the right brake and went off a berm. I could hear the tail of the fuselage go thump on the highway. Sure. And we rolled to a stop, about me from me to you, from a telephone pole. Oh Lord. Uh, got out, and the guy that had I'd landed over the nose of it says, God, the next thing I know, there's a tail wheel on my hood. <laughs> no, <laughs> really? You bounced the tail wheel off his head? No, or but literally. awful close. Yeah, darn. The other guy says, I saw this airplane coming, but I knew there was no airplane coming, so I didn't let up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, wow. And he quit drinking that night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy so, smoke. Pretty soon, the state patrol showed up, and... We discussed the whole situation, and he said, well, I've got the duty here tonight. I'll take you to town and watch your airplane. And he called the Western Airlines personnel. Mm -hmm. They used to help with situations like that in the good old days. And the next morning, I went to town that night and uh, got a room, come back out. Back to the Western Airlines guy picked me up and brought me out. And he says, what do you want to do? Well, I looked at it, and I run the engine. He said, ran fine. It was ice. I knew that, figured that. Yes. Why the white smoke with ice then? Hmm? Why white smoke with ice? You know, I've heard that sometimes it'll do it. It just was bunching out of there. Really? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Maybe because it, it, only the, the carb was only halfway the altitude, out. You know, something like that. Interesting. Okay. But it was bunching out. Anyway, the tore the aileron in two, but not the business part of it, just the trailing edge. Mm -hmm. Put a hole in the bottom about so big, not a problem. Busted a couple of stringers in the belly. Mm -hmm. So we pulled the airplane back up on the highway. And then the trooper's there, and he said, how much room do you want? Give me a mile. That'll get me up and down if I have to. Mm -hmm. He had to take off between power lines. And there was quite a, you know, airplane just barely comes to the edge of a two-lane highway. 
Right. Poured the coal to it, got off fine, kept the yellow line right down there, and like got above the poles and went up. Went over to the airport and landed. Nice people over there. I think I spent 20 bucks getting it fixed. Wow. And all we did is slip a piece of fabric on the aileron. Sure. Put a fabric on the bottom hole, didn't mess with the belly. Right. And I'm ready to go. Wow. They had PT-19s there, they couldn't fly during the day. Sure. They wouldn't fly. Because that, because of the density altitude? Yeah. Yeah, right, high country. The 23 with a 220 Continental yeah. performed a lot yeah. better, right. And you still have your passenger? Your passenger? Yeah, with a suitcase. Oh, no, no, he, I let him off way back somewhere. Yeah, okay, all right. Wow. And, uh, headed out for kind of Salt Lake City, I think. Mm -hmm. I made it till I run out of money and the last bit of gas, I'm in Pocatello and I said, I gotta get home this trip. Yeah, right. And I had to gas up once, signed for it. Yeah. And made it home. You made it home. And you, do you still own that airplane today? No. That went down the road. That airplane, I traded to Roy Shrek. Yeah. He did. He, he wanted a PT and get rid of this Ryan PT-22. Right. They were not a good airplane. Right. If you learned to fly in a 22 and survived the war, you were a real aviator. Yeah. Hot landing airplane. Yeah. Underpowered. Yeah. And you know, if you're short of the field, you give the needle a little roll over, a lot of little tricks. Yeah, bad stuff. And wow. uh, I traded it to him for that thing. I flew that a while and I sold it for $1,200 and got my money back almost. Wow. Yeah. Well, and you got a big adventure. Yeah, and a big adventure. Well, let's skip ahead now. You're going to meet Doris here pretty soon. Yeah. Now, how's this happen? Well, let's see. Somewhere along the line, I, had, I still had the student prints. Yeah. I had the student prints when I met her. I, I, I bought the, the C3 I bought. Yeah. I was working on it. I got it going, but I still had the prints. She was a beauty instructor down in downtown Spokane. And we met at Nat Park, one of the big band dances. And, and Doris lived in Reardon? No, no she lived in downtown Spokane. Lived in downtown. The folks lived in, what was the name of that? Just past Reardon, not this side of Reardon, <clears throat> Espanola. Okay, is that right? And you met her at a dance downtown? Yeah. No kidding. So we hit it off good. Yeah? And I you're what, 26 by now? Yeah. Okay. And you're going to give her an airplane ride? That's got the 3 3 going and decided she should have an airplane ride. Yeah. And I forget, it was a weekend? <laughs> anyway. Whatever. Yeah. Got out, I kept it out of felts, got her in it, you know, and it's kind of a clumsy thing because the door is on the wrong side. Yeah. You've got to get in and then get your passenger in. Right. You feed your feet through all these wires and stuff. Right. I don't think she was overly, overly impressed with it. I should have had the Prince. Yeah, nice. The Prince wasn't flying at the time. Okay. So we got in the thing and then weathercock twice just taxiing out because mm -hmm. it's in that brakes on it and it blow around and face the wind. We get out and I'd face it the right direction again. And we finally got out there to take off and gave her the needle and all 37 fearful horsepower <laughs> come alive. Mm -hmm. Got in the air and we're going around and pretty soon the cub passes us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, quite fast. You know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now let's get out of here. We'll go over to Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. We're churning along and everything is nice. <laughs> Smell smoke. <laughs> we mentioned it. Don't that smoke smell good? Yeah, I don't exactly smell like the kind I'm used to, but I guess it must be. <laughs> yeah. And pretty soon we got over the lake, smelled smoke. Now we're running, we're fresh out of sawmills and everything, and we shouldn't <laughs> be smelling smoke. <laughs> Anymore, right, okay. So I made a beeline to Weeks Field, which was another little paradise, which sure. is now County Fairgrounds in Coeur d'Alene. Okay. Landed, got her out, and I followed her out, took her over to the little cafe. Had a neat little beanery on Weeks Field. Sure. Pretty soon here comes some kid in and says, Did you bring us in that C3? Yeah. Did you know it's on fire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was disgusted with the damn thing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and it was on fire because the prop was fretting? The prop, the hub had split. Well, on a two cylinder engine, you've got a lot of yeah. this going Back on. Back and forth, and right. It had worked that hub on that shaft until it got so hot that the prop was all charcoal, clear out to the bolts. Oh, my Lord. How'd you get home? We left the airplane there and we hitchhiked home. <laughs> so that was her first up. experience. Yeah. 
You made a friend that and day. And she's still flying with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy smoke. So when did you go to Ox Meadow? When did that start? About 55. We lived in a little town, a little place. First we had an apartment in, up on the South Hill. Mm -hmm. And we bought this little house out on Napa, 118 South. It's just, just south of Sprague. Okay. About a block and a half. And it was, we had a shop there. I built a Ryan B1 there. That's another story. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just we wanted to get out of town. She was a farm gal. I had never experienced out of town, but I did not like town. Mm -hmm. I worked late out there in a the shop, and the cops would come by. You're going to have to keep it quiet in here. <laughs> 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 right, okay, sure. So town was going to disappear. Uh -huh. We kept looking every weekend. We'd go out, and finally we found where we're at. And we found out who owned it. And People were selling it on their own, and the price was reasonable, and we could afford it. Down payment, I mean, we didn't right, buy the sure. whole damn thing. Right. And we, the kid, the daughter was going to, where was she going at that time? She hadn't started yet, was she? She went to the little school out there. Yeah, he started her out there, so Doris, when school started, the house wasn't there, so she'd pack her out to the school so she get going on time. Sure, right. And, you know, get started with her age bracket. Right. And so Five we bought a house on. off the freeway. Okay. And the, the freeway wasn't there yet, but that's why we bought the house, because they were selling this whole rash of houses. Mm -hmm. And she had relatives that was in the moving business, so we got them to move the thing. Mm -hmm. But it didn't move for, oh, God, it was about two months late. We had the foundation up and the whole bit, and I finally moved it on B-17 wheels. Really? Yeah. So the house you live in now, you yep. moved onto the property. Yep. Good night. Wow. And from there on, we made that whole mess. <laughs> and the field, the very first of the, the field was landable. It had some big rocks laying out there, and there's hardly any rocks out there at all, but uh, Swanson brought in the trade school's Corbin Baby Ace, the first mm -hmm. airplane. Okay. And I brought the Waco 10 was the second one. Now, where'd you get into the Waco a little bit? Where'd Waco you get the Waco? 10, we were over in Montana looking for a Jenny that we heard was over there. Mm -hmm. Almost like selling Saturday Evening Post, door to door. Yeah. Finally we run into this guy. Said, oh, yeah, there's an old airplane out in North to North Town, mm -hmm. north of downtown Great Falls, okay. residential district. Oh, way over. Okay, yeah. He was... Pretty close directions how to get there. Went out there. This guy was working in a big brick cinder block garage. And there over the grease trap was this Waco 10. Wings pulled clear up the ceiling. Fuselage straddling the grease trap. Mm -hmm. They didn't use the grease grease pit, you know, mm -hmm. for a little bit right. of things. Right. And we looked it over. Oh, pretty good. And said Northern Air Transport, Great mm -hmm. Falls, Montana. Big propeller. Yeah. This guy had bid the route that Northwest Airlines had because Northwest and all the other lines had lost their contract with the government because they were carrying blocks and phone books, everything else. <laughs> and uh, he got it. Well, he defaulted because he had this Waco 10. Now, I would think, you know, if he got the contract, he had good borrowing power about that. Sure. Probably in those days he didn't have. So Northwest changed their name a little tiny bit from Airways to Airlines, and he lost out. Wow. That's what his plan was. That airplane was once going to be it. Gee whiz. Hmm. So you, you trucked it home then? Yeah. And then you put it together, and that's the first thing you landed at Ox Meadows. Yep. Hence the name. I had an old action. I was sitting out there, and we said, God, it looks like an old. They always referred to an ox airplane as an ox. Sure. OX. That ox looks good out there in the meadow. Become the name. <laughs> <laughs> and you landed in there first time. Gee whiz. Now, tell us a little bit, mid to late 50s. I mean, your livelihood then is selling. You're, you're going to be a flying salesman. And that, that went real I well, a, I understand. I had a little aero sport I bought over in Helena at the trade school. Okay. And I had rehabilitated it, covered it. It was kind of a crummy little airplane, but it was fun. It didn't have much power. It had 65 horse LeBlond in it. Okay. And one of my towns I had to call on was St. Mary's. Well, St. Mary's, you can't get there from here. You go like this for 
many miles and sure. it takes you forever. And I right. Thought, My God, I haven't got a lot of stuff to carry. I think I'll just take the airplane, left the airport, walk it down, do my stuff. Left here bright and early, and got in no time. I was right on final, came right over the log, boom, you know, and I thought, God, why didn't I think of this months ago? This is great. <laughs> right? Walked to town, did my duties, and carried the stuff I needed, and some deliveries I had to make. Come back, got in the airplane, I'm grinning, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going to Tico next. Yeah, right, okay. Took off, and I'm heading over to Sherwood Forest. Yeah. Thick as a place. <laughs> yeah, right? Chug, 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 chug. Oil spots on a windscreen. Uh-oh. I wonder what that is. <laughs> and I looked at the instruments, the first thing you do, we got no oil temperature. That's strange. Oil spots on the windshield, no oil temperature. Uh -huh. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> Once in a while, they miss a little. Pretty soon, I seen a meadow way back there. I think I'm going back that meadow. This nothing but forest in front of it. Yeah. Turn around, went back there, and by now she's smoking heavily. Uh huh. Time I went final, it was hardly running. Oh. I kind of landed on the side of a hill, you know, and rounded up at the top. Got out. There was a guy building a coot amphibian in one of the houses that bordered this meadow. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, he come out. First yeah. airplane ever been in that meadow. Right. <laughs> Good guy. I still know him today. Wow. And looked it over, and I decided there's no there's no oil in the tank, and there's no oil pressure, and there's nothing else, but this thing is full of oil. The scavenger pump failed. Scavenger pump had died. Yeah. And <laughs> started uh, pumping it out the nose, yeah. Pulled off. I, I think I pulled off a cylinder to get all the oil off of it. Oh. which is no more than a half-hour job on a little lawn. Sure. And called up Wimpy Redfern, and he brought some oil up to me from Tico. Right. Filled it up. All by now, the whole district was out there. Got it running. Taxied down the hill a little ways, because I needed all the room I could get with this old airplane. Mm -hmm. Took off and heading for Tico. Well, I'm dirty. My suit doesn't look so hot, but <laughs> I'm, I'm back in the sky. Yeah, right. Going along. Oil spots on a windscreen. <laughs> Same story. Smoke out of the exhaust. <laughs> Damn. Again. Yeah, right. Going to stop any minute now. <laughs> Landed right behind the saloon at Plummer, Idaho. Oh, my God. <laughs> Gee whiz. In a pea field. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> now what? Did I get all the way? Yeah, I rode home with somebody and called one of my buddies. I want to get it out of that pea field. And we took my old Dodge three-quarter Dodge half-ton pickup and my old trailer and went out there and disassembled that, that thing most of the night, loaded her up, just put the tail back up on the back of the tailgate and whistled for home and made it with no problems. Had an old lamp, one of the coal oil jobs sure, to right. put out in the back for tail light. So you went back to driving. Went back to driving. <laughs> and you got there where you wanted to go. That was the end of the flying salesman. That was the end of the flying salesman. It wasn't going to work. <laughs> now, your livelihood is, is primarily selling these beauty slash barbershop yeah. supplies. And on all these trips, you're stumbling into these old airplanes. Well, in those days, old airplanes are out behind the hangar. You won't find any today Yeah, of the right kind. And you're dragging them home. Cause and they were dirt cheap or free. They're going to destroy whichever. them. Yeah. So you're really preserving them, aren't you? Yeah. Wow. And there's, you know, we lived in town at the time. We hadn't moved out of Ox Meadows yet. Right. I could think of so many things that went away. You got some of the ash cans, engines, miss. airplanes. Oh, terrible. Couldn't store them. Didn't have anywhere. Should we go to Paul Mance? Let's go. Yeah, let's move forward a little bit. Um, 59, maybe. And you had the, you'd, you'd done the Ryan, and you had the opportunity to trade the Ryan off for the for the Jenny. And the, close, close. Okay. And about, uh, well, about the time they were going to have the Lindbergh movie, I spotted this old Ryan over in Coeur d'Alene at the big airport. Mm -hmm. I think I bought it for 125 bucks. And this is Thompson a and I would go every... Hmm? This is a Brom. Yeah, the Brom. Mm -hmm. We'd go over there every weekend and work on it. It'd sit out there and the one aileron was completely off in it because it had flopped up so darn bad and it tore the spar loose. Mm -hmm. And it hadn't fired a shot in eons, and the shocks were flat, so there was a lot of work to do. And finally got it up to where it was running, had the aileron back on, and I'm going to ferry flight at home, Spokane. So, uh, 
It was an uneventful trip. It run all the way home. Did good. Only thing something went wrong, the trim on the back. I couldn't. I had to keep the engines almost cruising to land it. Otherwise, it'd just start down. Didn't have enough elevator to hold mm -hmm. it back. Mm -hmm. So I got way out east of the field and just come a cruising in and got her on the ground, wheeled it on, and no problem. You said felts or at Ox Meadows? Felts. Okay, yeah. And at the time, you know the big hangar they've taken down a few years back? The guy that owned the Chevy place in the valley owned it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I made a deal with him, kept the fuselage outside, <clears throat> put the wing up in the rafters so I could get my shop built at Napa. Mm -hmm on Napa Street, and uh, towed it home, redid it, and then brought the wing home and did it in the backyard. Took the whole thing out to Calkins, because you could dig a hole at Calkins and lower the fuselage in the hole and walk across and put the wing on and pull the thing out. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, neat. One big piece, one, one, big one, piece, one, one, uh, one piece of wing. 42 feet of wing. Wow. It was a terrible thing to handle. Yeah, sure. It was a good old airplane. Doris and I, I, I was in the Army out at uh, the guard at Geiger. Mm -hmm. Korean thing. Yeah, Slow right. Slow learner. Yeah. <laughs> he went back, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Gee whiz. And anyway, got out, and we decided we'd go down and visit her sister in, in Salem, Oregon. Mm -hmm. So we've been flying it around here. God, it was a good flyer. Ailerons are just hideous, but it flew good. Did it have a right on it? J5. Okay. Best engine in the world. Sure. It just run like a watch and get by in 10 gallon an hour. Wow. Uh, took off one morning, going to head down for a run home. We was going to do a wall to wall and then head down to Pendleton and down the river and Salem. Took out of here, took out of Feltz. I think we took out of Calkins. I was keeping it up there at the last. Got down, just short of wall to wall and it quit. Well, it run out of gas. Mm -hmm. Got it had eight hours of gas in it. Well, somebody had stole the gas that night, and they'd, it had a standpipe in it, and the gauges you could hardly see them anyway, sure, so you'd right. use your wristwatch. Right. And so I'm very unhappy about that. And I pulled a reserve deal, which just got the leaves in the grass, you know, yeah, just on right. the bottom of the standpipe. Below the standpipe, right. And uh, landed and filled it up again and continued our trip. But it was uneventful. Went down to... Salem, had an old buddy that was in the 75th with me, picked him up. We went up to Portland and up to Beaverton. And Good Beaverton night. was the mecca of home building in the Portland area. Right, right. Flew it around. Had the daughter with us. On that same trip? Yeah. Had a dog and the daughter. <laughs> <laughs> had a crib for the dog or for the daughter and the dog wandering and around the floor. And yeah. The kid never wanted to get in a black car after that. The kind of thing had silver wings and a black fuselage. Yeah, that was that, huh? And it was noisy. Man, you you better say what you're going to say before we left, because there's no talking from then on. <laughs> in between. Wow. So, so somewhere in there, Paul Mance approached well, you. <clears throat> after I'd had it a while, actually, I had a, a C1, a lot of J5 right parts, and the B1. And about that time, I'd traded the B1 to Pete. Down was a duster pilot just outside of Moscow. Okay. And Pete Fountain. And I got a, for that, he wanted to get rid of this AVN 8 Waco cabin. A big airplane with a 330J, a tricycle. Oh. And uh. a friend of mine from the Air Force and I, we went down to get it. <clears throat> in fact, Pete took us down in his little flipper. Mm -hmm. And, uh, how about checking me out? I'm not going to fly that thing another foot. It's too fast, too hot. <laughs> right? Well, oh, this friend of mine and myself crawled in it. It's hard to taxi because you, you change the front wheel caster by hitting the brakes. Oh. Well, it go too much or not enough, so it took a little exploring to figure yeah. out. Finally got it faced on a runway, and away we go. Well, a tricycle airplane will just keep it going unless you pull it back because yeah, sure. it's facing the wrong way. <laughs> pointed the wrong way. Yeah, pointed the it wrong way. It ain't pointed up, it's pointed flat. Right, okay. Pull back, oh, hell, it flew good. It had all all the instruments and the stuff was little typewriter glued on there. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in no time, you can hardly read them. Mm -hmm. Sure. So it turned and was leaving the field. That's 
This little strip is down on the snake and it's rimmed with mountains. So I looked down and said, I think I'll put it's kind of a crummy day, I'll put a little heat on. And I got the mixture. Uh oh. We won't use that one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you can't try it. Now you ended up buying this airplane then? Well, I ended up trading my Ryan for it. Oh, you traded the Ryan for this goofy Waco? Yeah. The Brom? Yeah. Okay, all right. And that another feature, it had multiple disc drakes, but you had to pump them up somewhere around base. Yeah, right, so you'd have some brakes. Huh? Yeah. So we went to Pullman. <laughs> Starts pumping the things up. I didn't even know that, but I couldn't feel anything there. And I found out if you did pump them up, you had brakes when you arrived. Yeah, okay. Landed it. Everything's working fine. Looked it over. I think I think we topped it off and come on the felt. Mm -hmm. And shortly after that, Mance called me. This guy never even changed his name to the thing. Sure. And I said, well, I don't remember if I told him who had it. But I let him know that I did have a C1 and a whole mess of right parts. Yes. So that's how I got the Jenny and the Tommy Morse. So it was a basket, another Ryan that yeah. you traded. Yeah. It wasn't another the Ryan flyer. come from Coeur uh, The guy that used to do the altitude flight, Gage, Bill Gage. Oh, so he, the, the Ryan that you fixed and flew, you traded for the Waco. Yeah. And Not it, all of them. Not all of them? Not the engine. Hmm? Not the engine. No, I didn't. I have, had a special deal. He wanted to put a different engine in, so I said, well, it doesn't include the engine. Well, when the trade comes and man's got the Ryan, the engine, he But, but you had another that. Ryan. You had another Ryan basket then. Yeah. Okay. But it had J67. Oh, and it did. And that, that you'd never flown that airplane. Never that had, never a, did. Cause okay. I sure did to, so that was the trade. Oh, okay. okay. Interesting. And that airplane, and of Kermit Weeks, they sawed a lot of it up, and I think they pretty well destroyed it making the movie because they show pictures of the Ryan being built. Well, they didn't need to saw that good airplane up to show that. Yeah. So you think Herbert Weeks has that today? No. Uh, a guy back at Oshkosh has it that worked for Weeks, and I think he took that as some of his efforts. Because, you know, there's a Brom that hangs in the Henry Ford Museum today Yeah. that was used in the movie. Okay. And there's some narrative there well, that there's, there's made me three think, of them. Mine. well, they're worth it. Well, see, it was wrong. Yeah. The one I had is back in uh, Roosevelt Field Museum, in New York. which is on Roosevelt Field, but is a shopping center. So it's there were three of them made for the movie then? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the actor, Rube Lindbergh, Jimmy had Stewart. one. It was mine, and somebody else had another. They had to have at least two. Oh, see, the I didn't realize that. The one that's the Henry Ford is one of the other, yeah. other ones. But there's okay. been a lot of them built since. Now, when you got... The Tommy and the Jenny, they were basket cases, yeah. both of them? Yeah. The Jenny was covered, and they'd used it for a few movies, and they said they'd flown it in the spirit of St. Louis, but I doubt it. Mm -hmm. The Tommy was a true basket case. I had to put new Longerons in it. Had one brand new wing and never been on an airplane. But the rest of it, it needed a lot of tender love and care. Hmm. That's great. Um, what's probably your favorite airplane? Well, boy, that's hard to say. Airplanes are a, a compliment, not a compliment, they are a compromise. Compromise. You got one to go fast, it lands fast, you got one that gets off fast, it goes slow. Everything about an airplane is a compromise for something else. And they've yet to build the one that goes fast and lands slow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try the other way. What, what's what been your least favorite airplane let's, to fly? Oh, God. A little... The Tommy doesn't fly good, but it's a thrill. Yeah. Yeah, sure, it's real. The Aerosport was probably the worst flying airplane. Mm -hmm. It just didn't have enough power to get it done, so anything you do, you'd have to think way out in front of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it... And poor ailerons. In fact, the daughter and I went over to Feltz one day in the good old days before the tower. Mm -hmm. And we came back and the wind was coming from the south. And it's always when you can't get any altitude, it's hard to get over that hill. Pretty soon we're right down going through backyards practically. She said, wow, this is the neatest. I didn't realize this flying was this good. 
<laughs> and that was I finally it. found out that if I quit using ailerons and used rudder and mushed around, I could get a little altitude on it. <laughs> and the aileron How would you destroy it. the aileron, you'd mess up your bottom wing a little. Man, oh. holy smoke. Okay, we're running short on tape. we got just a few minutes left yet. we got two more subjects that are fun. And uh, how do you stay alive all these years flying? you got obviously thousands of hours, I think, in all these great yeah. airplanes. You're still here. Well, you get lucky. Lucky. That's all there is to it, huh? Well, no, no. You finally find out the way you should do it and not the way you have been doing it. <laughs> and if you catch on to those little things, you know, you're going to improve your methods. Okay. So always and try to get home fast. Yeah. You push hard to get home, right? Uh, <laughs> I never had a job that I had to push hard to get home. <laughs> yeah, pushing to get home is not good. Wow. Yeah, no. That's the secret of that. It seems like you've always ended up to have a convenient place to stick an airplane. That's some forethought. You say Sherwood Forest is not a good place to stick an airplane, but you got Mr. Meadow, and that's nice to have in your back pocket. Yeah. Well, he likes cars, too. You like cars, too? He sure. Does. Okay. Know. Sure. Well, you know, one of, well, I think probably one of your most recent adventures, uh, the one that happened just uh, this last year, um, you know, with with the, the Heath, the Heath um, that had, uh, I, I remember, you know, when, when we drove up there and you started telling us what had happened. And, I, you know, I've got to ask this question on tape. You know, what do horses know about airplanes? Nothing. <laughs> and also most pilots. Also horses. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that, what happened. Well, it was the redo of the 27 air races, and the Heath is the only one that has the same number as the Heath 75 years ago. So I decided to use the Heath, and the guy went over, it was one of those days that was absolutely letter perfect. There wasn't a bump, the thing was running so gorgeous, you just thought, God, this is just, I don't know, I know why I do this. Yeah, like flying in the inside of a, a light, light bulb. bulb. Right. There you go. <laughs> it was that good. Yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> got over there and landed and talked to the guys a bit, you know, and struggled. He had his Fairchild 24, and of course, it's much, much faster than the Heath, so he took off, and then I took off. And I got to Post Falls, and it was going good, and it just plain packed it up. <laughs> So the first thing, you, there's two things you do first. You pull the carburetor heat, and then you look and see where you're going to put it. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. All right. And I'm over the beautifulest meadow in the whole valley, and I thought, I'd be crazy to pass this up. I'll at least stop and see why it's doing that. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, whether you had a choice or not, right? These horses are all over one side grazing, no problems. Got out, fiddled to the engine, nothing wrong. Running up and down, couldn't get it to do anything wrong. Time to go. Taxi back down. What had been going on is this guy been hurting these horses and put them away when putting away time come with one of these four wheel ATVs. Yeah. Well, they make probably sound like a Heath. <laughs> well, I poured a colt to it. The horses take off down on what's now my runway, <laughs> going for home. It had nothing to do with airplanes. <laughs> and I'm catching up fast. You know, got a horse's tail end is getting bigger, and I'm not getting over them. <laughs> So I hit the rudder and went off to the right, and there's a big bang, and there's a wire wheel appeared right up about here. <laughs> and I kind of thought, I think that's us. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. You're yeah. not going to go flying And there on, it's kind of sliding along, there's a lot of dust, and it stopped. Mm -hmm. I got out, and by then the horses were all in a big circle, you know, looking at me. <laughs> wow. So I went out, and I talked to them a little bit, and nothing, nothing good. <laughs> and that's it. Started walking for the house a mile away. I heard a siren. <laughs> a lot of sirens now. People call up the medic for a cut finger. <laughs> <laughs> I get up to the ways, and here comes Prowl Car. He gets out, and he's got a loudspeaker. Please come over to the car. That's where I was heading. <laughs> <laughs> he gets up there, and that explained the whole thing to him. Well, we got to go down to the police station and write this up. Why do we have to do that? <laughs> I wasn't flying, I was taking off. I hadn't gotten here. <laughs> oh, that's a so and so and so. I got to do that. <laughs> well, we got just a few minutes of tape left. There's one story I remembered. If we could get this in the Orange Crate takeoff. Orange Crate? The Orange Crate. The Waco, the UPF, the guy oh. cartwheeled down your runway one day. Yeah. He could fly like the wind, right? Doc had. He got. This Waco and another from Dan Germina for building Dan another Waco. And 
old Ralph, that later turned into a cliche. If you wrecked up an airplane, you Ralphed it. <laughs> you Ralphed it. <laughs> okay. This guy, he was a hot shot. I mean, he even went to town and bought himself an orange helmet and an orange jumpsuit. The airplane was all orange. <laughs> it's an orange UPF, okay. And I had to finish some things up to annual it and had the STC a cowling I put on it. Yes. So he come out early that morning and there was one of them there late fall scuffs of scud about oh 200 feet in the air yes and he looked at that and i can punch right through that <laughs> i thought about that you know and i thought i can milk this job along until that burns off <laughs> yeah, right sure right so <laughs> i milked that job along until it burned off i wouldn't have had to he never got that high <laughs> yeah right exactly okay <laughs> he went back up there and he says now you don't walk and run a walk like an n 3 n which he'd been flying yes it's a pretty much spirited airplane you Open it up gradually and let the thing get to rolling before you have it wide open. Get the rudder hooking. Yeah. <laughs> we went up there and got the next thing I hear is just sitting up there. He let the brakes go and it starts going left, of course. So he gives it a yard of rudder and it starts going right. We got under the power lines. Oh. He's under there and then he sees this telephone pole go by or a power line. And I don't think I can like this. He comes back out of there and then he decides if I can get in the air, I can fly it. He yards it in the air. And he stalled it. You can see the ailerons are opposite what the airplane is just torquing it's off like snap this rolled, yeah. and landed on one wing. And then it went over, totally did a 360, landed on the other wing. He didn't <laughs> miss a corner. <laughs> <laughs> so he was in. The, he flew for what? Six seconds, maybe? Uh, he never flew it at all. Oh, he was for a six-second ride. <laughs> <laughs> six seconds. So that was a very expensive flight. Is that fair to say? Oh, I think at one time we figured it was ten thousand dollars a yard. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of that. That was the end of that. <laughs> Can you think any more, Jim? Quick, before we're out of tape. We're just got a few well, minutes we, left. Well, are you still doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> we're just we're yeah, we're gonna run the tape out. Oh, Bob Drew and I. We was, we was pretty disenchanted with Spokane. Both of them had been in Paris, you know, and in the Army, and Spokane was a little bit blah. So we were sitting around a saloon one night and decided that the Cleveland Air Races are this month, and why don't we go? And he had a little light homing cub, and I had the student prince. So naturally, being dumbbells, we took the student prince, because it had an impossible engine, and the cub was dependable. Yes. So one morning, and I'd gotten a ticket for something, so the morning we chose to leave, I picked up a roll of toilet paper and I carefully glued this ticket on the roll of toilet paper and we went out towards town and right over City Hall I launched that. Headed <laughs> 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 for Cleveland. <laughs> Holy smoke. Wow. We, the Cadillac, real quick, Dora says, because we've just got a few minutes left. I'm sorry. Okay. It, uh, you got some more student prints to finish. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hold up. Or, uh, we got enough, Gene? Ten minutes. We can do it. Anyway. Sorry. We're heading out, and we landed at, had a friend that run the airport at Kellogg. We took out of there, and he had already told us, well, you better not have any problem between here and Missoula. It's the only airport is, uh, oh, God, is it one of the mountains there, you know, no services. Right, right. So we're turning along, and just coming over Mullen, and things are going good, and there's less wind, west mountain and windshield, and all of a sudden, pew! More wind, more mountain in the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> Turn back and I look way, way down there and there is a little meadow. Oh, Lord. And circled, you know, and pretty soon, by golly, I got down and the planned approach, luckily, got in the meadow, jumped over a creek, pulled her back again and got her stopped. Well, it blew a gasket, a head gasket. Gee whiz. And a student prince got a Cirrus engine and a little bracket is held down with studs. Right. And they should have been safety wired from stud to stud right. instead of just cutter key because the whole oh. stud moves up. Oh, sure, unscrew. The valves move up and pretty soon there's zero clearance. Yeah, and right. All that air got to go somewhere. So <laughs> Lows the gasket. And so the stud's unscrewed. So we walked down to Kellogg. Yep. And went in, there was a big copper mining outfit there. Walked in there, copper mining place, you'd have gaskets for a Cirrus, wouldn't mm -hmm. you think? Mm hmm. They had copper well, there was a guy there, uh, and he looked at our situation, and he had a sheet of copper, yeah. and he scissored out the most perfect gasket. gasket. Had to make two of them because it wasn't thick enough. Right. And I'll bet they're in that thing to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Who was took out of there. I took yeah. out of there. He had to hitchhike to Missoula because 
It never got it off the ground. That Holy, and strip. you didn't put a scratch on the airplane? Not a scratch. Wow. And that's still on that engine today? I'll bet you. No. Oh, my goodness. Made it over to Missoula. The guys in Missoula, there's Ford Trimotors there, and, all, and there was the old strip up on the hill. This is like Johnson Air Service yep. or something? Okay. They own the strip, too. Yeah, okay, got it. And they said, well, we've got to put this airplane in the hangar tonight. We don't leave good airplanes like this sitting out. So right. they put her in the hangar and took us to town. Wow. We had quite a few experiences on that little trip. We got back, well, one of the funniest ones. Probably 80 hours round trip, I'll bet. All of that. Yeah, maybe under, more. Maybe. Yeah. I was going to Milwaukee, and we landed the gas up. And big mistake, the guy that was gassing us up, where are you going? Going to Milwaukee. Now oh, you got plenty of time to get there. Good. Took off. Pretty soon there's no big glow in the sky, and we've been flying for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's getting dark. Yeah. And the fire's licking on a strut on a prince. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it doesn't lick on a strut during the day. Yeah, right. It gets dark yeah. when you do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sure. So we're turning along, and pretty soon I says, Bob, and we're passing notes. Stand up and look at that gas gauge. Got a Model A gauge hanging below the center section. Right. I'll wiggle it and see if it's got gas. Right. Got <laughs> gas. <laughs> turning along. Yeah. Pretty soon there's a very faint glow on the horizon. Big city. Yeah, right. Bob. <laughs> no more gas. No more gas. <laughs> yeah. At least it won't shake. Yeah, right. So pretty soon we get to the city and it's still running and it's still breathing on a strut. And at night, you know, you look at the map. There's a big yellow blob. And way down here is supposed to be the airport. Well, at night that goes way, way out farther than the yellow blob in the yeah, daytime. Sure, right, right, right. So I'm looking down here for the airport. All of a sudden I saw this green light way up here. Hot damn. We goes up there, and it's a municipal airport. And we're thinking we both got a license. We'll only lose one when we get home. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like that, I had one. <laughs> yeah. So Whoa. it's Goonie Birds, DC threes, and oh. airlines are landing at Milwaukee Municipal Airport. Oh, this is the big airport. Okay. Waited until a couple of them landed. It's still running. The last one I got behind him, and of course, when they're all slowed down for landing, the prince a little hurried up. And yeah. Stay, you keep him in sight. I come around and he landed. And now it's us, and he's turned the lights off. Oh! And I'm just coming over the threshold of the fence, and I'm feeling around for the ground. You know, it's kind of yeah. like going in the closet looking for your blue suit. <laughs> yeah, the door. yeah, right, right. <laughs> Found the ground. And there's a bunch of blue lights taxi off here, and got her stopped and turned up there, and we taxied up there, and there's a bunch of airplanes in a circle. With parking spots. Sure. Pulled her over there, shoved it back in there, and we got out and we're standing there, and the old prince is going pop, snap, tick, drip, trip. <laughs> here comes a Jeep with a beach in tow. Yeah, following right. him. Guy comes up, where'd you guys come from? Oh, we've been here for quite a while, we just look at an airplane. <laughs> well, that damn tower is supposed to tell me when an airplane comes in. <laughs> they never saw you later. Yeah, don't know about that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Next morning, come out there to get the airplane, go to leave. Yeah. When'd you come in? Last night. You're not here. How do you get here? Well, we landed, you know, maybe uh, until light. <laughs> that damn crew, they were supposed to do this. <laughs> bitching about the crew the night before. Yeah. What do you call this airplane? Student print. No, I don't want the name, I want the manufacturer. <laughs> Student print. <laughs> so uh, he finally, he said, it ain't going to get much from us. Sure. Wow. So oh, you get in that thing and you take out that way, you see, and then you go on and disappear out that way and you say such and such hundred feet. Oh boy, we did and we was gone. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of that story. Next stop's Cleveland. <laughs> got to Cleveland and by God, we found it and uh, we start circling the field like you do where you're going to land, right. you know. And rawr, rawr, rawr. P-51s, bells, all kinds of neat stuff. You're in the middle of the air races? We got in the right middle of the time trial. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> really? And Cook Cleveland's there that year, isn't he? Yeah. And uh, so Jackie Cochran. Soon, that became... We're getting green lights everywhere we go. You know, they want us out of the sky. Yeah, right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so we landed and taxied up. The thing was painted red, white, blue. So they put us right there in the front with the act planes. Yes. Sit on the top of the center section of the wing with our cushions and watch the whole air show from the center section of the Prince. Oh, there couldn't have been a better seat in the world. <laughs> oh, God, that was just oh, great. Oh, unbelievable. Great. We're out of tape. This is the, we, hey. we're out of, we, we did it. We cooked the whole thing. This is, yeah, it's been a great, 
great evening. Uh, <laughs> thanks for sharing with us. Uh, thanks for coming over tonight. And uh, I guess I, the one final question, you know, what's the secret of life, Skeeter? How, how do you do it? Luck. All right. <laughs> it's all luck. Good. Yes, that, that was very good. Thank good you very much. This is wonderful. Absolutely Thanks, wonderful. Boy, that was. Wasn't that great? You're unbelievable. Once you get your crank, it's kind of like we get some primer in you. You can just you'll run all day long. You didn't have it. We no, I didn't think it was over hour. already. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was. We just ran that tape out two hours nonstop. Incredible, Skeeter. You're amazing. Once you get going, these yeah. story. I mean, have you got another hundred of those stories? I'll bet. Oh, we, oh yeah. we could go through a lot more tapes. I know. But I mean, this <laughs> yeah. is a great slice yeah. of. Yeah, this oh, is no, a perfect. You know, every flight's a great flight of something. <laughs> yeah, I'm you, you know, yeah. once you got going, <laughs> Jim and yeah, I were winging it. Forget it the just out the window. Because yeah, you, uh, you just flowed beautifully. Man, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Wasn't that incredible? Day. You missed what he left the next morning, though. Hmm? What, at when Cleveland? You left at the, with the student prince the next morning. You went down the river, didn't you? Oh, that was one of the trips on the way home. We took off of Winona, and you take out over the Mississippi, mm -hmm. and there's power lines all over the place. That's the way they hold it on one side of the river to the other with these power lines. <laughs> to keep it from drifting apart. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. And Have you yeah. heard all these stories, Bill, before? No, you get some new stuff today? pieces, it's filling in the gap. <laughs> <laughs> the goal here is to produce some kind of tape so everyone gets an opportunity to see the slice here. Yeah. Dick, you know Skeeter at the Carlson? <clears throat> No, I don't. It's Doris and Skeeter Carlson. Is this the gentleman's house we flew over that day? Yep, that's right. Yeah. You yeah. can't get up, Skeeter. You're still hooked in. Yeah. You're still hooked, yeah. You're still hooked in. Oh. <laughs>